Here now, we've got it's Contenders China time. I'm John Kick Tripod Horseman, and I'll be your host this weekend. And I'll be joined by a plethora of incredible analysts to break down these matches. We're going to be starting with Moss 7 Club versus Flag Gaming. But before we jump in, we are in the playoffs right now, Vowels, which means stuff has changed a little bit as far as the format goes, right? Uh, stuff's all over the place at the moment. Uh, we've got the introduction of Wrecking Ball and Symmetra. We've got a bunch of changes in particular to Hitscan. And China is a region that's a little bit unpredictable anyway, so I'm really excited to see how these new patches turn out. Yeah, there's there's a ton of things going on here. So in the, um, the, the playoffs, we're doing best of five, best of seven grand finals, single elimination. Uh, map the map rotation doesn't really change except for that best best of seven um, so that's what we're gonna be seeing here today but let's talk about this new patch a little bit here Kenobi give me the rundown what do people need to know about this new variable that we have in our uh, contenders games right now so you know as we mentioned as Val's mentioned you know we have this character wrecking ball uh basically played as an off tank a lot you know kind of put in sometimes with that triple tank you know dive as compositions that we sometimes see very good at you know area denial with his minefield and just the mobility that you get from wrecking ball is just something that if used correctly is probably the most mobile character in the game if you use your you know grapple correctly to just like zoom around and you know grapple and go really fast around like corners and like get in the air and it's just a very good area denial character, so see him, we'll probably see him a lot on control uh, if we're going to be seeing him at all. We don't know. China, as Val's mentioned, very uh, very interesting region. They sometimes don't like to conform to what we normally see as meta. Um, the other thing is we have uh, we have the new Symmetra. You know, just Symmetra changes. She has a new ultimate. Uh, she doesn't have tracking on her gun anymore, so definitely interesting to see if she's going to be coming up. And then probably something that we're going to be seeing a lot that's going to affect China since they love their McCree is there's no hit scan fall off anymore or rather there is it's just at 50% from the 30% so hit scan definitely going to come back in and yeah, as i said McCree there's some people like undead in this met in this chinese contenders who they really love their McCree and you know China seems to love their McCree so we might be seeing a lot more of that in these coming matches so let's let's talk about these two teams for a second because we're going to see Moss 7 Club who if there is a team that plays an unorthodox game in the Chinese contenders reason, region it's definitely going to be Moss 7 Club Vals. Oh yeah, Moss 7 Club are an absolute treat to watch. They pull out stuff that no one expects. You'll see their main tank switch onto Fava, going on to Kingslow second point, because why not? You'll see their off tank moving on to Tracer for Oasis, triple DPS for sure, it's not uncommon. You'll see them pulling out Diva Roadhog tank lines, not at having an actual main tank. And they make all this work. They finished top of the group for good reason. And I'm really excited to see what they can come out with. If we do see a team run Wrecking Ball, I think it will be Moss 7 Club. So on the other side, Kenobi, we have Flag Gaming, who we kind of discuss is is also a very unorthodox team, but in the way that they are able to flex and adapt to their opponents. Yeah, and I think that's definitely what Flag Gaming is going to need because Moss 7 Club, as Val has mentioned, uh, has a lot of this ability to just, you know, counterpick you in a way because they just have these, like, compositions where you don't really think it's going to be coming out, right? They're going to run, like, Bastion on attack on Volskaya A. Like, no one's expecting that, but they just, they know how to do it so well. So if Flag Gaming is going to take the win here, I think they definitely need to be able to have that, you know, flexibility and switch off, like, forego alt charge and just switch off to counter the other team because Moss 7 Club this entire game is most likely going to be just counterpicking you, counterpicking you, counterpicking you, kind of playing the way the game was meant to be played, right? Where you're counterpicking your opponents. So I think Flag Gaming does have a few pieces that can definitely, you know, flex over and, you know, take over the game. Jason, for one, plays a little bit kind of, of a, like a solo QE type of game where he like goes off by himself and tries to, you know, get these like huge Genji plays. But I think if they can reel Jason in a little bit and like make him play closer to the team, I think they definitely have a better chance to win this game. These are teams that are both very close when you look at the win rates on their, their map types. They're almost neck and neck on everything except for on payload, where Moss 7 Club has a pretty big advantage there. But I wanna I wanna talk more about where where this match really is. We see in Overwatch that uh, the match isn't just 
all about, there's always this one matchup that tends to mean the most. Uh, Vowels, in your opinion, what's that matchup for this game that is going to be really important to whatever team comes up on top? I think it's going to come down to the DPS matchup. China as a whole is defined by the ability of your DPS duo to carry. We see some good plays come out from supports and tanks, sure. But if you have a strong tank line, that's going... If you have a strong DPS line, sorry, that's going to take over the match in ways we just don't see in other regions. And I think that does give the advantage over to Moss 7 Club. Jinmu is an absolute star on Genji, one of the best in the region. Mask is a great hitscan specialist, and especially with the changes to hitscan in this patch, I think that's only going to bolster hit Moss 7 Club's strength. They can run all the crazy stuff, but at the core, they have really good fundamentals too, and that's going to show in the DPS play. So... At the end of the day, you know, if you've been following the English broadcast over at twitch.tv slash broadcast GG, you'll know that before we jump into any match, I make you guys stick your neck out and make make a prediction. And you two are probably the two best analysts we have in contenders or, or China or South America. Uh, we've tossed the Oracle... Uh, <laughs> title around to both of you quite a bit so now's the time to put it all on the line here as we go into this first map here shortly kenobi who walks away with the the win here really quickly um well i'm kind of known as the professional guesser i think you coined that term uh but you know today i think i've decided to ask a higher power so i'm going to be asking them will Moss seven club win don't count on it all right all right Moss seven club what about you vowels I'm going to go with Moss 7 Club as well. I think maybe looking at a free one here. All right, we're actually already in. They actually jump straight to it. What amongst many, and Ryan, go ahead, take it away, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Contenders China. We've just been launched straight into the game, straight into Lijiang Tower, a fitting place as any. I, of course, am Josh, one amongst many, Penton, joined by my good friend Ryan Central. And we've got a real brawl just going underway straight away here. We've got Hammonds just rolling around, but it looks like Flag Gaming actually with a very early start and actually managed to clear up and just take the point straight away. With a lot of help from DMO there as well, Sombra is such a big thing to have on these maps. And if you're trying to run Hammond in this main tank slot, which a lot of teams have been doing, Sombra could really tear that apart too. Having a mercy there just to keep the fire alive, keep the distance away from a hero like that, is the main reason why the fight went out. We only really saw the back end of it, but we have a good understanding of what these teams are trying to do on Garden Stage. This is a pharmacy playground, and that's exactly what both these teams are trying to run in this lineup. Nice early kill from Mask onto Coldest. We do see the Battle of the Faras, though, in the sky. Looks like Jason's taking a rocket, but the Mercy's just going to pick him up. No problem there, as Jin Moves is still looking for these angles, just trying to make his way onto the point. Jason there just getting pushed out. However, he's stuck on the back foot. We do see the Hammonds also just trying to roll his way through. Minefield actually doing a good amount of damage, just clearing a lot of space zone out there, but they've almost flipped the point. They're just going to clear out one or two more targets. Barrage comes in, gets one, gets two, gets three, gets four by the looks of things. Jason's already gone huge here. And it was one of those things where Moss 7's lineup just is taking their time a little bit too much. They don't really have the instant impact of killing stuff. Their real DPS is only Farah. They're only running the one, running triple support with the Brigitte. So they have to be on the point and fighting. It just took, it took too long for Moss 7 to be able to clear out this point. Flag Gaming are just doing a really good job of zoning out Moss Club 7, making sure that they have to take their time. Vanessa has switched off the Hammond onto Reinhardt, which shows the kind of tempo and strategy that they really want to be playing here. And so far, so slowly, they're just going to push around from the side, just try and eat their way here on to the point. Wasn't no just, just dive into the back line, he's looking to get a little bit of damage down, and oh, some good picks actually coming out from the side of Moss 7 Club. Now they're going to be just rolling themselves forward, pushing out the enemy team. This looks like they've actually managed to flip it for themselves, they're actually spending too many resources there. But it's on 88%, so Flag Gaming really only have to have one sort of win here. It's still actually ticking up, they haven't taken it just yet, now they have 92%. But Moss Club 7 do have a couple of ultimates on their own. The main one that I'm looking at, though, for Flag Gaming is Coldest with that Pulse Bomb and how he's going to try and get into the back line. Gudan has that transcendent. So if that Pulse Bomb could go in and force Gudan to maybe trans prematurely, that could be huge for being able to take this point. 
And of course, as mentioned on the desk as well, we do have that new Sombra. This is, of course, being played on patch 1.26. So the Sombra changes are up and running in. That's when you see DMO building towards the ultimate as Vanessa does charge in. Jason with a nice early kill to Gudan, though. That's going to neutralize that transcendence. That crucial ultimate is gone, and Jason has just gone huge. We mentioned it at the start. Jason is definitely the player to watch here for Moss 7 Club, and you're seeing why here, ladies and gentlemen, as they do clear the point once more. 95% now ticking up. The question is, can Moss 7 make it even back to the point? It's looking unlikely. Jason's just doing a really good job of being able to sort of keep looking at what directions that Moss Club 7 can come from. We've been thrown straight into this match. Moss Club 7 is a team that likes the unnatural, I suppose, when it comes to teams comps. And this is really important when we're looking at what the meta has done and how it's shifted, especially since these new changes with Hammond. With Symmetra, albeit she hasn't really been played in any region so far, but you do see less Mercy, less Widowmaker, you see a whole different shift of meta. For most people who've been watching Contenders, you know this already, but Moss Club 7 are a team that like to bring out stuff like Bastion, their main tank wants to switch up to a dozen different heroes when he feels like it. So it's one of those things where Moss Club 7 likes the unpredictable, and I think so far Flag Gaming, it's just been one map, but they're playing what's good on certain areas, and they know what they need to do to make sure that Moss 7 can't go into this with enough space. And so, space is going to be the key here as they do start rolling forward. It looks fairly even on both sides, but Wrecking Ball just goes right through the team, swings on in and just gets everyone just bumped forward. Going for it again, gets the ground pound, launches everybody up. Oh, that Anna is so low, but she's just going to survive a little bit longer. Looks like they get the D back on the Diva. This Wrecking Ball, Vanessa, is just going huge here. It's just continually swinging back and forth, battering the team about. Flag Gaming they must be feeling a little bit rattled here. They're on the back foot. They are reeling, ladies and gents, as they do back away now. And he's got an ultimate already. Vanessa has already built this ultimate. But can he drop it in the court in, in the choke point? No, he cannot, and so he does get destroyed. And it does look like Flag Gaming are really good at pushing on this anyway, so it's quite handy that he never used that ultimate because he will have it for this next fight. Interesting strategy that they're sort of running. It's kind of Goat's combat instead of a diva they're running the hammond to be ultra disruptive but they need to be careful of the front line of flag game and Earthshot comes through actually they do have the graviton ready jinmu hasn't decided to use it yet as an boosted reinhardt is going to be facing off against him there's a lot of ultimates being dedicated to this fight but actually flag game and are taking a lot of ground here yeah, Moss 7 Club just keeping them pinned back here. You can see Jinmu there, he's just been holding onto this Graviton side. Very nicely done just to keep hold of it, especially when you're holding this doorway. It's going to be super important to have this, right? Exactly, and, and I think that it's one of those areas where Flag Gaming is actually going to use the Graviton really early, and it shows how much they need to take this point back. But another Graviton on the other side of Moss Club 7, Sabari comes out too. Recently, uh, hasn't actually been buffed. That's worth adding, though. Those support changes haven't gone through just yet. Uh, excuse what I was about to say. So you don't have some support changes in there, but it's interesting to see here a slight use of team uh, still played. That is the team kill sound, I believe. And flag gaming, I just sort of sat point. Moss Club 7, uh, Moss 7 Club, looking very different to what they did on Gardens. Yep, they're just taking it steady. Vanessa has been a scourge so far on this ham. He's looking to continue that true terror that he's delivering. Just rolls through, drops the minefield, kills over with a grappling hook, apparently. There we go, just brings him down. I think that was just the knockback killing him off there. Vanessa has just been a non-stop problem here. Usually it's like, it's the Anna's job, right, to try and slow down this wrecking ball. But it seems like there's no sleep darts hitting him. There's nothing controlling him. He's just getting away with murder. Because I think a lot of resources is just making sure that the team survives when you're running stuff like Brigitte and Reinhardt Zarya. You need to make sure that those tanks don't die. Your whole front line is your whole team. And right now, Flag Gaming is starting this push by killing off the Lucio with a very well sort of timed fire strike from over. He's going to push onto the point. It looks like Flag Gaming are going to be able to take it from there. Yep, over just breaking down the front door there with that nano boosted Reinhardt. Of course, very important to mention, Moss 7 Club on 99% now, so they only really need to one, uh, win one team fight. Ryan, how do they win that team fight is my question to you. Well, they have the F shot ready. They're going to build up ultimates fairly uh, quickly. And I think Vanessa, actually, with an ultimate like Hammond has the actual minds to sort of zone off certain areas, it's going to be important, especially against the team like Flag Gaming are running, but it's very slow. The Oshare actually does come through uh, from Flag Gaming, actually. Over's going to be aggressive here and clear out stuff. But we do see a bit of a weird flank. Must have seven actually rushing onto the point. They've just completely ran past the front line. Yeah, they have so much durability, so much tankiness here. And Vanessa's actually trying to do the spin around on the point, but it looks like he's just going to give it up for now. There's the Graviton Surge, though, coming out from Jason. That should be enough to clean up this team fight. But with Jinmu staring down the barrel of a 99% ultimate Graviton Surge, this is truly going to be sort of the big key. They've got to get this Graviton Surge up for the next fight. They've just got to find the angle, right? 
Exactly, and it's not unheard of to have teams like Flag Gaming taking the point in 99% and actually being able to keep it. So Muscle Club 7 can just sort of rest on their laurels here. Graviton is a big ultimate that can be used, but it could be eaten by Lai, who is on the Diva. Vanessa's just trying to get into the backline puzzle of disruption. That ultimate has just oh, been used. It's yep, it's gone in. Vanessa just snowball straight through it. But there's the Nanibus on the Reinhardt. Over is actually so healed up right now. He's got so much tankiness and so much durability. But he's just not going down. Goo down though. Lights up the kill feed on the Anna. The old woman's showing that she can definitely deliver with the best of them at the moment. Looks like the Reinhardt's in a spot of trouble. But there's a sound barrier that's going to keep everybody alive in this fight. And now the stakes are just getting higher and higher. 80% now on this charge. Vanessa still just diving to the back line. But just gets bounced out and slept in the corner. Hammond has just been left and abandoned outside of this fight. He's going to have to roll his way back into it. That could have said, keep your eye on over. He does have that uh, shutter coming online just managed to get one the charges connect and he doesn't actually manage to crush master there. he just survived that little bit longer master eventually does go down however over collects him with that hammer he's just doing a good job pushing moth seven back zoning them away so far there's the nano boost on him as well he's just going to be destroying devastating people as he swings his hammer left right and center just brings people down jimu now on the back foot gets taken down and there we go over time ticking over vanessa trying his best but just so low gets taken down there by the bio grenade doomfist even joining us here on the point and it's just some simple matter of cleanup. Doomfist down. Overtime Wick burning so quickly. There's another Earth Shadow coming out of this Reinhardt, and it could just all be over. Yes, it is. And it was pretty spectacular fashion for Flag Gaming to have that resolve to keep the point that whole time. But I do think that to an extent, it was one of those things where Moss 7 didn't really have the tempo and urgency to actually sort of play that one out. It felt like they had got a couple of picks, but they still weren't dedicated to throw stuff in there. And with their lineup with Hammond in there too, they missed a lot of burst potential that Diva would have. And, you know, being able to use stuff like self-destruct to actually get a pick. Something that they lacked. They just really struggled to... They were fine getting picks, but when it came to clearing the whole of flag gaming, that was a whole different story. Yeah, and it's a, you know this is a bit of an upset at the moment. Lost Seven Club definitely the favourites going into this one. They finished, of course, at the top of their group. Flag Gaming sort of coming in at the fourth place on there. So Flag Gaming looking good, and Lost Seven Club perhaps not quite as polished as we thought. We expected these guys to thrive in the chaos of a new meta, but that seems not to be happening. We're going to go to a brief break while we get the next map set up for you guys. I know we sort of launched into that one. Next one should be a little bit smoother. So do stick around as we go to map number two. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is, of course, Josh Watermont 20 Pempton. That over there, or over there, I'm not sure, is Ryan Central as well. And we've just finished up map number one on Lee Jang Tower. Moss 7 Club versus Flag Gaming. Ryan, quick thoughts on that match as we get ready. It was a there. surprise. I think it was a lot more one sided than anybody would have expected, even if it was Moss 7 that came out in front. Um, Flag Gaming look a little bit more composed than we've seen from them in the season. They've been a bit sort of like a wishy-washy team, really. Beat teams worse than them, losing to teams better than them. Just to sort of like they were the bar of their group, right? That's how it sort of felt. So going up against Moss Club 7, uh, Moss 7 Club, uh, every single time. Uh, it's one of those things where you want to see the zany strategies. And like Moss 7 Club haven't been perfect throughout the season. A lot of the times that they've just got into their own heads a little bit with the crazy strategies that they wanted to run that just hasn't worked. But I think their game against Future Group a couple of weeks ago they really sort of honed in on their craft of being able to run crazy strategies and had a reason to and knew exactly what their roles were on the team. Yeah, it definitely felt like with Moss 7 Club, sort of throughout the season, we've seen this team that's been kind of very bipolar. Sometimes when they're playing teams that seem to be better than they are, they, they try and play like these meta comps, right? And that tends to backfire for them. They seem to be at their strongest when they're sort of embracing the chaos slightly and embracing their, their wild nature where they will play things without a main tank, where they'll play things that are unpredictable, where they have their Reinhardt flexed to far up for, for god knows what reason but it works for them because that's sort of what they practice and it makes them very difficult to read flag gaming on the other hand seemed to be a team that's been sort of i would say uniformly like on the up and up very early on in contenders china they looked extremely weak but with that addition of that player jason he seems to really be the key of right. the team yeah it's just sort of talking about my seven club again is the games that we've seen for them so far, they've seemed somewhat stuck in like whatever strategies that they're playing. This is the first time that I've seen them run strategies, not do as good on them as you've seen before, but they don't really change to anything else, really. They, it, It's weird seeing like there's a whole diverse meta that you could be playing right now to try and catch people out. And I know it's just been one map with Li Zhang Tower, but I was sort of expecting much more. And I think we're going to get more on like the next map, which would be hybrid. Uh, in this case, it's loser decide, so there's always a strong chance that we'll go King's Row. It's just worth noting everybody loves King's Row. And I think if we go to a map like that, that's where we're going to start to see Moss 7, uh, Moss, uh, Moss 7 Club flex a little bit. 
if that makes sense. Being able to actually stretch their legs out and try different strategies that I think we've never seen before in contenders in this playoff so far, anyway. Yeah, I mean, there's there's new options on the table as well. Like, there are things like Sombra to come in, and we can just see the next map. Ryan has called it quite naturally. King's Row will be the next map available to these players. So they will be moving to that very soon. Like, But let me finish that point on Sombra. Like, she sort of popped up, and I've noticed, like, in Contenders EU, Contenders US, it's gone, like, she's actually been very pivotal. But we're actually going straight into it, launching right into the game. And it looks like, hey, yes, we do indeed have that crucial Hammond main tank role. We, this is sort of popping up more and more, isn't it, Ryan? Yeah, but with Zarya, is something different. You usually want the Diva there for Defense Matrix to protect the Hammond. He has his shield, sure, but other than that, he is just a big ball that can be uh, done a lot, uh, you know, torn apart, torn asunder. But here he comes in the power driver combo, ultra disrupt using the shield, to keep himself alive. 800 health that he has, which is proves dividends of why Hammond is so good. The issue is with Hammond is that shield doesn't go to the rest of his team. It's almost a selfish way to play. You don't have a big barrier like Winston or anything like that to protect your team. But most seven club are actually taking the point. Like it's not being contested. Yeah, this Hammond is just being so disruptive on the back line, just bouncing through the team, constantly dropping that pile drive onto them. He's already got the minefield out. Jin moves, drawn out of Dragon Blade. He's got one, but he gets shut down by Mika just with the boot there, just getting that damage in. It looks like Flag Game actually moving on the retake. You can see here the Brigitte rally, giving everyone a whole pile of armor as they do start rolling forward, just starting to clear off the team. Transcendence even coming out here on the offense. They really want to try and take this one. Dragon Strike will be put out somewhere. There it goes through the point, but it doesn't quite manage to find anything just at the moment. Jason, though, truthfully almost has this this Graviton Surge, if you can get this out, this could be what they need. Actually, they might not even need it here, ladies and gentlemen, as they do continue rolling forward. They're trying to get rid of Jinmu here on this front line. They just can't finish him off, though. It looks like he's going to be surviving that a little bit longer. Brigitte goes in. There's the grab. Do they get any kills on the convert? Doesn't look like they get much. They just get one. There's a nano boost as well going into this as the brawl slowly winds down. It looks like Flag Gaming might just hold. They might do, and this is one of the problems with Moss 7 Club that we've already seen so far this map. But actually, they managed to take it because Flag Gaming are so keen on killing Jinmu, who doesn't actually die. So now they're in a bit of a precarious position. Wrecking Ball is going to dive in, try and do a little bit more damage, maybe get a pick that doesn't quite do it. But this is the thing about Moss 7 Club. They take so long to take objectives. Like, it looks so easy for them. And then Flag Gaming tried to turn it up a notch, use the ultimates that they had just got. And now the Graviton has been used. Moss 7 are dedicating a lot to this. And the picks are now starting to come through as Jimmy has brought out the Dragon Blade 2. Yeah, he's just cleaned up with that. He's just used it as a street sweeper, removing the threats here on King's Row. And they will continue this roll on forward. Vanessa has just been a constant thorn in the side. So there are answers to this to this wrecking ball, right? The Anna sleep dart se seem to work quite nicely. Of course, they're not running Anna at the moment. This Goats comp, though, seems to be really struggling. It's a brawly sort of closed up comp. And this Wrecking Ball just seems to be tearing it to pieces, right? Exactly. And most clubs, uh, most seven club need to sort of take as much ground because they know what happens when they sort of leave out. I'm pretty sure Vanessa wants to use the ultimate there, but it goes so low. Even with the healing from the Mercy, still gets taken down by Jason. Diva Bomb comes out and there's no shield to really sort of deal with it. But Mask is able to take live before he manages to remech. Vanessa had to get the pick with a lot of the actual mines that Hammond has at his disposal. They're going to push on free. That was fairly straightforward for Moss 7 to actually take that fight. Yeah, they just managed to sort of... It looked kind of rough there for a moment or two. Vanessa took a huge amount of damage, and Earth Shatter comes out of over, and it almost seems to get them sort of the momentum for Flag Gaming to start busting out here. That said, they do have a Dragon Strike available to them, and Flag Gaming, again, still sticking on this Goats comp, this triple tank, triple support lineup that's been so common. There goes the Wrecking Ball into the back line. There goes a Graviton Surge as well, picks everybody up, and now the kill's starting to finally come through for Flag Gaming. There's still 4 minutes 20 left on the clock, and they finally put a stall on this payload after a little bit of a dicey first point they finally put the brakes on and now they can take a breath regroup and hope the Moss 7 club don't just run over them which seems to be their modus operandi so far and Moss 7 club do have a few ultimates of their own to push on through most importantly jimmy with the dragon blade so far being able to be uh, a big impact for pushing on through objectives and to really take the momentum vanessa is just going to sort of come in and cause as many disruptions as he can now the aggression of flag gaming is starting to show and they're making sure that they go in with this with a pick yeah, it feels like they're getting a lot more control onto Vanessa. That Zari, though, is providing those bubbles, will help him sort of get out of danger as he will just bounce his way out as, well, Wrecking Ball is often want to do. That's it, Flight Gaming continue their hold so far. The, the Goats comp seems to be springing to life here. They've finally started to slow this one down, but Moss 7 Club, they've got a lot coming online. 
they have a Graviton. That's the main one. And the minefield is ready for Wrecking Ball. Vanessa, it's going to be difficult to actually swing in and get good use out of it. Maybe you want to put the minefield behind the lineup of Flag Gaming so they can't get out. Like, Vanessa's just in there rolling. Isn't really oh. doing much. Yeah, Shara actually comes through. Yishin is taking a ton of damage. Yeah, and they've actually managed to pull Vanessa out of the Transcendence as well. There is the Graviton Surge. Yeah, everyone caught up into this one. Dragon Strike goes right through it and just tears people apart. It's the previous patch sort of Golden Boy combo. It is the one that you want, and it works so wonderfully for the Mask showing up on the Hanzo, collecting all his kills on the kill feed, and perhaps collecting play of the game. Potentially. Coldest does have a uh, Coalescence coming up fairly soon. They don't have a big ultimate like a Transcendence or a Valkyrie to just sustain fights, but it does look like Vanessa is going to push it aggressively. The amount of adaptive shield that Wrecking Ball is getting here and what Vanessa is managing to do against the comp like Flag Gaming is crazy, the like double the help. But yeah, the point is rolling on through. And again, Flag Gaming's attention is just taken away from the objective. Oh, that Diva Bomb could be quite big. And it gets Mask, who is a huge part of the DPS comp. Jinmu dropping down as well. No more DPS left. Vanessa is trying to do sort of the, the whirly around the point, ring around the Rosies, but it's not quite working out for them as he does start to get slowed up here. Dragon Strike even been committed here through the point. Looks like uh, MSC, they want to go back for it. There's the Graviton Surge, though. That should put the kibosh on everything. Jason says no more, no further, and draws the line here at two minutes. It's like Moss 7 want to make sure that they can elongate these fights as much as possible, like they enjoy the brawls, and this is something that we've seen from them in the past. They love those scrappy fights, they almost seem to really like just get better based off of them, but now Flag Gaming are doing a really good job essentially running Goat's Comp against this just to make sure that they have the sustain. The only one that gets a lot of effective use out of that is Vanessa with the adaptive shields on Wrecking Ball. But other than that, you can build up fairly quick Gravitons, but the Dragon Strike got used in that last fight by Mask, so they don't really have the combination there. Wait. Oh, huge shadow. He's going to get the Zarya. They need to disable Yixin. He has that Graviton Surge. There's a Transcendence, though, keeping everyone on MSC alive. There's the Grav going in as well. Now can they get the follow-up is the question. The damage just isn't there for them. Everyone's still alive. Oh, Dragon missed. Strike comes through a moment too late and just doesn't get anything. That said, they still have the damage to do it. Over. Well, his play is over from now. Diva dropping down as well. Here comes the Dragon Blade as well. He's trying to push down the Zarya. Jason gets torn to pieces, and they just roll it in the support stuck on the back line they managed to complete it and i think they might have done it with just over one minute left as well yep one minute and eight seconds to be precise i believe so it was it looked a lot more like it was just you know once a uh, seven seconds sorry my mistake but like moss club looked like they were just actually stomping through that that they had the momentum in their favor but i think flag gaming did a really good job especially on the last point to stall it out for as long as possible they had like four and a half minutes on the clock after hitting the second checkpoint so flag just sort of switched to more of a goats composition you know your triple tanks uh with a brigitte lucio moira to just keep them alive and get them to the places they need to be and from there it looked like uh, it was going to be a lot harder for the Musk guys to actually push on through so now Flag gaming need to sort of be that time. It should, it could be fairly straightforward for them, but it does look like they've locked in guts come straight away. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't surprise me too much, although they're, they're teasing out the far now. Who knows what they could run there on offense? They could change the bastion at the last possible minute. But I kind of like this from Flag Gaming, right? On paper, they are the weaker team coming into this. They are the, the sort of the underdogs of this matchup. And so Flag Gaming just running things like GOATs, running things that they have practiced and scrimmed for months and months and months and months, and they know and they're confident on, it's probably going to work better for them than trying to just quickly launch into the new meta. Flag Gaming is a team that sort of thrives on maybe setting up Jason, setting up these big plays, and then just playing a normal game of Overwatch, especially against a team like Moss 7 that is so known for that adaptability, for that sort of crazy high-paced uh, high play that they seem to favor. And it's no surprise to see like Vanessa doing such a good job on that uh, wrecking ball because this is what Moss 7 does. The lineup that Moss 7 have currently suggests to me that they're sort of expecting a Widowmaker potentially on flag gaming. It's not really a strategy that we've seen an awful lot of since these patch changes have gone through with Hammond with the fall of damage, stuff like May, for example, having zero drop off on a right click. I do expect that we may see her in the future at some point, but who really knows at this stage? But it does look like a fairly straightforward conversation coming out of flag gaming. They just want to sort of bull rush the oh. point as much as possible. But Jinmu shuts that down fairly quickly. And that's always going to be a big deal. You can see Jimmy already on 70% ultimate charge. You can't let a Junkrat get started like this. He's just going to get that Riptire primed and ready to go. And especially against Goats, that's oh so vital, isn't it? And it's so easy to get your ultimate when facing off against big chunky tanks like that. And because of the composition of Flag Gaming have, they have no way to actually fight from a longer distance. So they can't really do much about Jimmy, who actually does use a Riptire and has big targets to choose from. Does it actually get any of them, though? 
Yeah, he doesn't find anything. Oh, beautiful shot from Master, though. He's just stood on top of a statue. No one's actually contesting him as well. No one's paying attention to this Widowmaker. She's Nobody just got hard shots on, on targets just free all day. She's just lining up these hits. Mika drops down there. We go two body shots landing. Finishing blow comes in. Oh, uh, rifle butt to the face as well does bring down the Begita. And suddenly Mas springs to life here. And like I said, it's it's only really the Diva that can contest this. And if the Diva shut down, well, Mas can just play from up here all day, every day. Well, let's say that Lai actually does try and contest Mask, then Jimu's open to get a ton of damage in onto the whole team of Flag Gaming without the defense matrix. So it's it's a rock and a hard place for Lai that just is struggling to push on through this point. So Moss 7 Club, whilst they have quite the flimsy lineup, they have no barrier, no Reinhardt, no Winston, no Orisa. They're just controlling this whole area. Diva Bomb goes in, up, and over. Doesn't find anything, though, and Lai does take down Jinmu, a crucial part of this defense. He has that Riptire as well. He's been torn to pieces. There is a Transcendence being used on the point, but there's just nobody left alive. Jason now starting to go on a tear as well, starting to pull people apart on this high charge. Zarya can see there. He's just going to rip Diva out of her mech, and down it goes to Zenyatta as well. He's just lighting up that kill feed as Jason seems so on to do. And there we go. They should be able to just finish up this point. And Moss 7 coming out with a quick swap, bringing out the Hanzo here for second. Not surprised in being able to use the little bits of high ground that you have available to you on street. But the issue with something like God's Come the Flag Gaming is running is once it gets onto the point, it is very difficult for Moss 7 Club to actually move it. Jimmy does have the Riptide, didn't really have it available for the last fight or never thought it was a position to use it. Maybe got picked early, but the Graviton is ready from Jason and that's going to be the main top point. Again, they don't really have much synergy other than maybe just throwing over on the right now straight into who's there. Riptire has made its way out. It's just looking for a target. Gets around the point, looking for it. He still just can't make his decision. Make your mind up, lad, as he gets absolutely nothing. Vanessa did go down, though. There has given time for Vanessa to make his way back to the team, hopefully. But they still managed to get through this crucial first choke point. Next contention point, probably going to be the corner around the pub. Maybe not, actually. It seems like Moss 7 Club's just going to fall back a little bit. Only a little bit, and Flag Gaming are just moving at this point. They're not pushing ahead aggressively, which is interesting. They just take what they can. Graviton comes up very early, and this is what I mean. They're just going to completely envelop who got stuck in it. Didn't take much for over to just sort of waddle over there, just kill everything that was there, and just sort of push them through. Jimmy again, just gets caught out on the flank, so this is making it much easier for Flag Gaming to take this point. Yeah, now they're definitely going to take that advantage. They've just got the supports in their sights. Gudan drops, uh, sorry, Udan drops down there to the, just the onslaught running forward. And there we go. Like, I just have to back away. There goes the wrecking ball ultimate. The minefield just deployed a little bit past the point. Vanessa going to try and store this up as best as possible. Well, around the point, but DMO is just there to shut that nonsense down. There goes the dragon strike as well. But Master's just falling back, actually. He's just sort of with a fadeaway dragon strike, realizes he can't contest it. And yeah, he's probably going to be swapping up here. Who knows really what to? Maybe a Farah just to be able to sort of fight from a distance. I, actually, it looks like he may be staying on it. Maybe... Oh, no, there it is. There's the Farah. So it's just able to sort of put some damage in from a distance in a safe distance away from Flag Gaming. But it's more the areas of where the front line needs to be fighting against Flag Gaming. It's just sort of like all of this ground has been left available for the attacking team to push on through. Riptide does come on through. Looking for really back line, but it does look like Lies just trying to take it down. Does get demet by it. Yeah, he does sacrifice for it, but they're going to keep this push going by the looks of things. Moira committing that coalescence to the do continuing pressure forward. There's the Transcendence, though, coming up for the defense. It's going to keep them all alive, nice and toasty for a little while, even guarantee that res as well. Vanessa rejoining us here on the Rhino as ditch the Wrecking Ball for now. They've got a lot of explosives coming in here, of course, with the Junkrat and the Fire just trying to smash people down. Graviton Surge comes through, though, and just sets everything up nicely for Mask and Jinmu. They're just going to put a couple of rockets and grenades into that one and tear everybody down. Moss 7 Club finally against Stall this one out. Three minutes 20 left in the clock, though. And Flag Gaming, they've got a Graviton Surge. They do. They've just got to be able to sort of take the ground. It's going to be a lot harder now that Vanessa switched over to the Reinhardt instead of Hammond. So now there's much more of a line in the sand that Reinhardt can control and has the Earthshot. So much better being able to sort of quell any attack from Flag Gaming. They're going to be very aggressive here, really pushing Flag Gaming all the way back to spawn. Jimmy's Riptide has come out. DMX lie again. Yeah, that seems to be the only target you can really find so far. Ursula comes through but doesn't find anything. That said, Mask comes out with a Graviton Surge from the top and the gate. Jason's ultimate as well catches everybody as they try and run into it. Ligoning DMX sets Jason up, uh, sets Mask up beautifully, rather, and he just rocket barrages down absolutely everything. Jason actually ditching the Zarya for now brings out the Widowmaker. Interesting pick. It's going to, it's maybe to shut down what Mask wants to do. As I said, oh. <laughs> well, there you go. Exactly. Like Mask. 
on the Farah had so much space in the air and flag gaming because they were running Ghost Comp, which is close quarters combat, didn't really have anything to do. It's very much a keep away strategy. And again, shot out of the sky, Mass just disappears into the ceiling as he was trying to sort of shoot on up. Jason is now just trying to find avenues, and you can see how Moss 7 Club has started to back off just because of, you know, there are a couple of players down, and Jason's very scary on this Widowmaker. Oh, that is a crucial kill. Yishin goes down with the Graviton Surge. He's not going to have that available for this fight as Jason continues to find value. He's actually gone on a massive flank as well, got behind the team, has Gu down in his sights, doesn't quite get the kill there. Mercy's trying to haunt him down here, just going a bit Neptuno, does have that ultimate available to him, so he's just going to use that just to push down the Widowmaker. It looks like Mask going to try and match Jason, but just has to back away straight away and as we start rolling towards the end here how do Moss 7 club bring this one back they've just got to be able to sort of try and stall on the point they do have transcendence which is a big one for stalling the objective but you don't want to lose any effective healing straight away Gudan is just going to rush onto the point gives his team a bit of space they have graviton too that might be dividends here for winning this fight Oh, it gets nothing, but Wizard just leaps away and the Dragon Strike comes through. He just doesn't find anything either. Just clears out the point a little bit. Mask now swapping off. The Widowmaker goes to the Tracer to try and contest Jason a little bit. They know they have to shut this man down. Jason has been such a crucial carry piece for Flag Gaming. And it's so vital just to keep that man busy at the moment. That's it. Over with a huge amount of damage here on this Winston Primal Race. Just disrupting and devastating people as he continues to rumble here on the point. Transcendence going to keep everybody alive, though. Vanessa drops down. And now, as we dip under that one-minute mark, it's looking harder and harder as flag gaming continue to get the kills they just need to get one or two more it's literally 0.30 meters to finish this one out if they can just get one or two more but the reinforcements coming out of moss 7 club continue to stall this one out yishin continues to survive that little bit longer vanessa now rejoining the fight but just charges right on through has to be careful desperation doomfist has made himself known but after they charged off the map oh dearie me i think no he got live with it so he just took the diva with him not too bad of a trade there jason not getting the shot on the baby diva as well that's going to be crucial as transcendence keeps moss 7 club in this game with 25 seconds left, meaning that Moss 7 Club have done it in a better time. Actually, Jimmy on the Doomfist isn't letting anything go. Has the ultimate too, so it's going to be aggressive. Has the ultimate more of a get out clause than anything aggressive. So Moss 7 Club have actually managed to stall it. Again, those scrappy long fights where it all really comes down to individual play. That's where Moss 7 Club starts to look good. We're now into overtime, and it does look like Flag Game and have to use a lot of resources to even touch the point. Yeah, and there goes the Doomfist straight into the back line. He has Zenyatta in his sights, doesn't even need to do it as, well, just the rest of the team comes in and cleans up. They've got to be careful not to just let the point roll in, of course, so they do fall back. Keep it alive that little bit longer. It's looking more and more like Moss 7 Club are going to be able to do this one, are going to be able to level up the scores one to one. It's over, just bounces out. You've got to get back to the point that that overtime wick isn't going to last much longer. There it goes, just continues to tap it, <laughs> bounce no. out, bounce back in. There we go. Nobody doesn't touch it. Oh, dearie me. Looks like Moss 7 Club will tie the series up one to one. A lot stronger, but these teams are looking so much closer now than I guess anybody could have envisaged. But this, for me, this is Overwatch. Teams adapting and changing their lineups, actually switching heroes to try and counter the enemy team. Both of these teams are not afraid to change to Widowmaker, change to Farah, change with different comp, change this or that. Um, and it's so close, even on King's Row, where you'd expect just Reinhardt Zarya all of the time as tanks. We saw Hammond, we saw Dive, we saw all of these different strategies. It's really entertaining to watch it. This could go either way at this point. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's it's still up in the air. This is kind of what we expected out of Contenders China as well, that it could just go either way. And especially with a new patch shaking things up, anything could happen. I just have one thing to say on that note, though. Play Symmetry, you cowards. Right, we are going to get ready, though, for the next match. And we have, of course, our lovely analyst desk to help break down exactly what we've seen so far. So, KT, please try and enlighten us on where the series is going and how wrong are our analysts going to be on their predictions. <laughs> I love to do that. You know, I live to make these analysts act a fool, and we're going to do that here in this <laughs> halftime desk. But before we do, uh, I, we need to talk about Vanessa for a second. Resident Wrecking Ball player for MSC. Uh, Kenobi, how do you feel about how uh, uh, Moss 7 Club has been utilizing Wrecking Ball in the first half? So Moss 7 Club, Vanessa, this looks like they're trying to play like a very disruptive style of Wrecking Ball, which is, you know, kind of what he's meant for, right? Just to wreck things in the back line, right? So just he's going in, Vanessa's going in um, very deep uh, at a few times. Sometimes too deep is going in, trying a 1v6, not the most ideal uh, character to be doing that. But what they're doing and what I like is that um, 
Yijin is doing a very good job of making sure that, you know, he's keeping his cooldowns ready for Vanessa going in. Like, if he's playing Zarya, he's waiting to bubble the Wrecking Ball going in, so you get a lot of charge, and then you, you know, keep your Wrecking Ball alive a little bit longer, or using, when they're on the Diva, switching over and using that Matrix. So I really like um, the communication coming out from these two tank, uh, from these two tank players. You know, it's just like, I'm going in, give me my Zarya bubble, okay? He already knows. So they're doing a really good job of disrupting the backline. The only issue for MSC so far is that not much is dying and which that's in the end it comes down a lot of it comes down to you got to be getting some kills and putting out some damage and sometimes you can be as uh as disruptive as you want in the back line but if you're not getting the kills to follow up on that then it's just not going to work out as well so uh, i want to go on in a second but i do want to talk a little bit about a new player that we haven't seen a whole lot of and that's over playing as their new main take for flag gaming vowels how do you feel like he's doing so far in this first half I feel like this is how you make a debut in Chinese Contenders. The tank play was absolutely a weakness through flag gaming throughout the reg regular season. We saw them looking pretty competent on dive a lot of the time, but when you had to go to Reinhardt to the Rissa based compositions, they tended to fall apart. Over has made an immediate impact on this roster. It's a huge step up over Melons, their former main tank player. I think when Gladiators got Fisher, it is that level, the amount of improvement we're seeing from this roster right now. And that's why flag gaming have looked so competitive so far. We've got some great power plays from Jason, sure. But over is just such a step up from on main tank, and it's really helping flag gaming stay together in these fights. And we like thought it was it was weird because when we were doing, you know, when we were talking about this game beforehand, we thought that this was gonna be probably the most, you know, one-sided game, like Moss Seven Club, first in their group, flag gaming, fourth in their group. Like this didn't look like it was gonna be a close game at all. But flag gaming definitely today has come to play. Like they just the way that they've been communicating, the way that their team comp has been working has been working very well. As Val has mentioned, Jason on the Farah has been pretty much it's like kind of how we saw him play when he first came into flag gaming, right? We all talked about this guy is, you know, really good. He um, he won Contenders Trials with the, uh, I forget the team name, but he won Contenders Trials with that team and is now here. And when he's on that fair, man, it doesn't look like Moss 7 Club has any idea how to deal with him. He's just, he's been also very good so far. So, Vowels, you're lucky we don't have time for me to dissect that fissure comment for a second because, oh, man. I'm, I almost, uh, Dropping whatever, bombs. let's move on here. Jason, <laughs> so you brought up Jason. On Li Zhang, he went off. Uh, he's been a, a huge factor for flag gaming so far in the first half. Vowels, if you are Moss 7 Club going into the second half, how are you looking to neutralize him and make him less of a threat? I feel like... Just keep doing what you were doing on King's Row. Obviously, King's Row is a much less Farah friendly map, but on the same same side, Li Zhang is much more Farah friendly than a lot of maps, and that's why Jason was able to bring out such a high caliber. I think if the map rules we're seeing going forward, Assault maps, none of them are really huge Farah maps. Escort, we might see it coming out a bit more, but I feel like Flag Gaming, despite the huge upgrade at Main Tank, are still very reliant on Jason to have a great day on Farah, and if like, if Moss 7 Club can maybe pull out masks from McCree, which we know is on a high level, or the Winnermaker as well, just shut down Jason, and you've got really got to see the rest of Flag Gaming step up then to fill that void. So, Kenobi, as we go into the second half, you had said Moss 7 Club 3-1, to one, correct? Did I remember that correctly? Yeah. Okay, you said Moss 7 Club 3-1. to one. They lost the first match. It's definitely even at, at at the very least here are you still pretty confident your boys from mmsc are you uh you think they're still gonna pull this one out i think they definitely can it, it's it, i didn't expect it to be this close right i didn't expect flag gaming to come and kind of punch msc in the mouth that hard um the way they did on Zhang. Um, but from what I've seen from them on King's Row, they looked a lot better. You know, when Jinmu is able to play the Genji, like he was really good on Genji. And when Jason, you know, isn't able to play that Farah or that kind of Genji carry potential when he's stuck on the Zarya, it's not as like flashy coming out from him. So I think, you know, as they, as Val has mentioned, it really is like they, re Flag Gaming relies a lot on Jason. And if you're able to neutralize Jason, I'm not sure the rest of Flag Gaming has that kind of potential. Well, with, you know, Moss 7 Club, you definitely have more avenues to try and have that carry potential, you know, with Mask, with Jinmu, like these players can really just try and step it up. So I, I, I think it's still going to be Moss 7 Club 3-1. I wouldn't be surprised if this went all five plays, though. 
So then, vowels, I'll toss the last one to you then. If you okay. are flag gaming and you are, you know, at this 3-1 deficit, according to Oracle Kenobi here, uh, who do you really need to step up and be the difference maker in this second half? I feel like we've got to see it come out from DMO. We can praise over on the main tank we want, but once Jason's out of the picture, you need your other DPS to step up. That's just how this region works. It is all about the DPS carries. Jason's showing that potential. Brigitte, well, sorry, DMO had, maybe had some good moments under Brigitte, but other than that, we haven't seen too much from him. And I feel like he's really the player that needs to step up if Flag Gaming want to have a chance of winning this. If Shonda can be competitive, I'm still not convinced they can actually win. Fair enough. Are you sticking with your predictions going here into I, the second I, half? I'm going to stay with 3-1, more seven club. All right. You're in agreement. So you're either both right or you're both wrong here. I can't wait for you both to be wrong. And then we have to find a new Oracle. I hear that one amongst many is quite the Oracle himself, which we are getting ready to go into map three as we speak. And you know what? Let's just go ahead. Let's jump right over to our casters, one amongst many, Ryan Central. Go ahead, guys. Thank you so much, KT. 3-1 coming up from both sides. I've got to say, I probably agree with that, but after the showing that Flag Gaming has brought us so far, like, I, I will also highlight that Vanessa seems to have just come alive. Like, you know, we mentioned that DPS seems to rule China, but the tank play coming out of Flag Gaming just seems to have gone to another level so far. And they're bringing different strategies in too. This isn't just like, you know, run goats comp. It's not just a Ryan Hatton and Zarya. This Hammond's play, the dive has been pretty good. And there's been a lot of different compositions that have been used. And I think it's less about individual performances when it comes down to teams having to switch up different heroes to like combat different strategies. So in that sense, it's whatever team can really look at what the enemy are running, what area of the map that they are in, especially on something like 2CP uh, that we'll be going to next, of course, that you need to have those strategies in planning. You need to very much keep an eye and keep pressing your tab button on what the enemy team are running because you need to adapt quickly or they'll just run over you. Yeah, you're pressing those kills to come in quickly on Assault, right? It is a map style that is based around that ability to clear the point in a decisive manner. And we haven't really seen that from either team so far. Like all of these sort of end of game pushes have been very brawly, very long, very sort of drawn out fights. So I'd say brace yourselves, ladies and gents, for, you know, what, what we expect to come out of Assault. But I really think, especially like with this Goats comp, they could probably really struggle here if they don't actually manage to find those killing blows coming in quickly. And it feels like they haven't been able to do that so far. Well, uh, if, if Flag Gaming decide to run Goats comp on defense, I know a strategy that most of could really <laughs> like to run. They brought out a Bastion with like an Orisa and stuff. They knew uh, when they played against Future Group in the sort of group stages that they knew that like Future Group back then liked to run Goats comp on defense, play really far up, play really aggressive. So Moss 7 Club decided to go, let's get a Bastion. Let's get a Bastion. And as soon as that aggressive push came in for Goats comp and they realized what they were running into, they got destroyed pretty hard. So this is, um, Assault is very much a game mode that's very interesting to watch. Uh, anyway, I feel, but when you have both of these teams looking at what the other teams run in, changing up the different compositions between stuff to do with Hammond, stuff to do with Goats comp, and everything in between, this is going to be really interesting with how teams adapt. And I think that's the name of the game for both of these squads. Yeah, I mean, I'm personally privately hoping as well that we go to Volskaya and then we see some mad Symmetra flanks come out. I think if any team's going to do it, it's going to be in Boss 7 Club. But there's also Have a hero we... that. I was just going to say, have we really seen any, because Lucid decides, have we really seen any other team run the other, like, assault maps? I think it's predominantly been Volskaya anyway. It's kind of like King's Row that I think it's just, like, the favorite because you can run different strategies on it. So, especially going into first to second, across all different contenders regions, I think Volskaya is the most popular one, especially in, like, NA and stuff. It's pretty yeah, much how I mean, it was run. We, we are just waiting on confirmation for what map will come up next. So we will go into that game as soon as we can. But there's also another hero that I want to mention as well. That Moss 7 Club are kind of, they are known for running this hero every now and then, which is the May. And she did receive a quite dramatic buff. Ryan, please explain to me this this buff, this this horrendous thing that they've done to May that makes her this unstoppable force of killing nature at the moment. The devil is like a new trident. Her right click is no like drop off at all, which means that she can be like the hybrid between projectile and hit scan, which sounds ridiculous, but um, it's one of those areas, especially if you're going on to some point, like for Sky, first point is too open, I think, to run a mate, but certainly second, either on defense as a last ditch stall. We saw it a lot from Chinese teams when it came to defending uh, the last point on uh, just King's Row. 
but we never really saw it from either of these teams. So maybe they're holding out on it. Maybe they're not comfortable with it in a very similar style to Symmetra. I don't feel that something like Sim is not being played because she's just flat out bad. I think it's just going to take a long time for teams to really work out where she's good and really work out where she's like where strengths are. Also, we haven't we didn't really see a lot of Sombra on King's Row, which I think is another hero that got reworked, honestly that I was honestly surprised to see very little of, but maybe that's just like the NA teams that really like to run her all of the time at this point. Yeah, she's really been popping up sort of all over the place at the moment because it's just so much easier to get those EMPs off reliably. You can sort of safely build them up quite nicely now. And it feels like a, almost like how she was before where you were playing that very e EMP centric sort of play style and because it's so easy to get set up because it's so easy to sort of run in and get that emp delivered then you can just catch everyone off guard just disable everyone and then of course set up a clean team fight win off the back of that one we are still waiting of course for that map choice coming up once we have that for you guys we will let you know straight away if you are curious this is the english coverage as well of the chinese broadcast so we are just sort of riding on the back of their schedule at the moment brought to you of course by the lovely people at broadcast gg ryan and i have been having a blast casting with these guys so if you if you're definitely interested in casting and sort of hosting as well like producing there's all sorts of things that broadcast gg does definitely go and give those guys a look as well i'll give them a free shout out because they absolutely deserve it I think a lot, and in those areas as well, China and South America, where there hasn't been an awful lot of light, it's very easy to sort of sleep on these regions. But now that we know that we're getting another Chinese uh, Overwatch League team, there might be a lot of talent here that um, you can essentially see that might be in the Overwatch League next time. It's hard to say what Guangzhou might do. They might just pick a whole Korean roster in the future, who really knows at this stage. But there is a lot of good Chinese talent in here, and... These playoffs and these finals, now that they've played on a new patch, are just going to be really interesting to see what strategies are run and what teams uh, end up playing. I think all of the regions, all of the playoffs, for me, have been a lot more interesting because of the balance patch changes. The only frustrating thing is that uh, you just have these situations where like, you have a new patch that went on to live that isn't in contenders with the spot changes, the Mercy nerf, the Anna buff. But we are going to Volskaya. <laughs> surprisingly. Uh, so I do expect that we're going to see some different strategies other than both teams just running to comp. I'd like to see more strategies surrounding Arisa, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Yeah, and just like China is one of these regions, I think, where the team play perhaps isn't quite up to spec, isn't quite up to the same level as, you know, a region like Korea, perhaps. But the individual skill, the individual players that we do see coming out of these players can be extremely high level, especially sort of Chinese Genjis will blow your mind. And I personally, I want to see more Dragon Blades. I want to see more of these Genjis popping up. But the meta is sort of shifting to this more brawly, rough and tumble style. I also think we should keep an eye out in future, for, especially with some teams coming up, where a Doomfist could make himself known as well. He's sort of creeping back into the meta now that we have these brawlier playstyles. But we are here on Vol Sky Industries now. And it's Flag Gaming starting out with the defense. And it looks like it's going to be everyone's favorite. It's going to be the triple tank, triple support. It's going to be Goat's Comp. And I just want to highlight the last time that I sat here on Vol Sky looking at Moss 7's lineup as they were coming out spot. It's like, they can't be running this. You cannot be surprised what Moss 7 are going to bring out here. It does look like it's going to be some sort of like mixed match of whatever they want to run. It might just be that they're sort of running this goats comp. I guess both of these teams, and a lot of teams in the Overwatch contenders region anyway, just aren't sure what is good where. I think the teams that run stuff like uh, Sombra and Doomfist are the ones that just want to just throw it and see if it works. But Moss Club 7 running a very weird lineup. No main tank. Yeah, they. this is Moss 7 Club in a nutshell. They are just going to go right in for it with a very brawly playstyle as well. This is also a very mobile style. We've got the Super Shimada Brothers joining us as they do take control of the high ground, just trying to get a little bit of damage out. Flag Gaming, not going to waste any time, though. Just going to run down Vanessa by the looks of things, just bully him out. Flag Gaming don't really have a good answer to deal with this high ground, but with that early kill, it looks like they will just be able to start pushing Moss 7 Club back. But Moss 7, they have them surrounded, technically, although Mask is going to take a plunge. Yeah, that's just going to delay Moss 7 Club a little bit. Vanessa is switching over to the Wrecking Ball. Gudan is now on Zenyatta. It's kind of like there was a lot of focus maybe going on to Jinmu's Genji, but they realized that they can't essentially dive anything. That is why God's Comp is so good. And you can see the, you see the strategy of God's Comp. Everybody's just stood on the point, and they're going to say to Moss 7 Club, we're not going anywhere. We're just going to stay here. You've got to try and move us. We're all big, beefy targets. Good luck. So now oh. Vanessa is going to just bowling ball through them, but no pick so far. Again, Flag Gaming going very aggressive here. 
yeah, Vanessa's gonna try and disrupt all that sort of cluster together. <laughs> and he's already got 52% of his ultimate. He's actually doing a surprising amount of damage every time he sort of wrecking balls his way through this entire team. Of course, the Farah is gonna be so pivotal to this as well. Just put sort of a clock on things. We do see Coldus bringing out that um, Coalescence, just gonna try and keep the Diva alive. Good job by Lai as well, getting rid of Jimu from the sky. That Farah threat is so difficult to deal with with that um, Goat's comp that killing it early is always gonna make Ooh. a big difference. There's some really good Moira play coming out at the moment. You essentially just maybe think that Moira is just hold left click, put out healing orbs, get the ultimate. But there was some nice aggressive play that really followed up on Flag Gaming's lack of range. So just bringing out the coalescence to actually have that damage onto the fire from distance is big. But Vanessa almost has that ultimate. Has to take his time because if he gets stunned and CC'd out of this, it's going to be difficult. But the bomb goes down. That's an easy way to move Guts Comp. Yeah, they've just blasted them away with ults. Jimu drops a barrage as well, gets rid of DMO, and now the point is covered in mines. Right hard just charges right into it. Oh dear, it's all over now for that lad. And Jimu even collects up Mika with a beautiful rocket shot just to finish that one up. Lost Seven Club managing to take the point, but they did it using quite a lot of ultimates. So it's going to be tough for them, perhaps, to snowball this onto second. Yeah, but then again, they do have their support ultimates coming through, and it might just be a case of Mask and Jimu being damage boosted by the Mercy trying to get a pick into the backline. But again, it's so difficult to pick out a weak target in Flag Gaming's lineup. All of these heroes can look after themselves somewhat, but they work so much better when they're all stacked up as a team. So it isn't as straightforward. They did use a good amount of ultimates. Now Vanessa's just going to get stunned. He's going to use his shields to try and stay alive. But this is just very difficult for them to push them through, especially now yeah. with ultimates used. Defensive ultimates now coming out for flag gaming. They want to try and push something back here using this coalescence. Jason actually on pretty high charge. On the back lines, just goes for the Zenyatta, who has the transcendent, so he's just going to keep everybody alive at the moment. Nobody dropping down to death there, but the Diva Bomb gets thrown in. We have the bigger bang attack as Lai just takes down two. With the DPS gone from Moss 7 Club, this fight should all be over. And there we go. We even see the Diva going in for a quick reset. It'll be interesting to see if Moss 7 Club change up their lineup somewhat to something a bit beefier, or they're just going to try and like. Swing around the back line, cause a lot of issues, see what ultimates they'll have available. They have a lot of ultimates coming up, but it's unfortunate they used both their supports, uh, Transcendences and Valkyries in that last fight because it didn't really amount to much. Flight Gamer do have an F-Shatter and there's no shield to sort of block it. So, Moss 7 Club could get caught out fairly easily here if they're not careful. Vanessa is just going to be a complete pain in the behind, rolling around on this point. Drops the minefield as well, but Sound Barrier is just going to eat up a lot of that damage. Dragon Strike actually comes through as well, crosses over the point, but doesn't find targets. Jimmu drops the barrage as well, but doesn't get anything for it. Just gets taken down. Jason continues to be a menace on this area. They have no way of controlling him, and it feels like he's just building up to this high charge again and again. Cleanup crew comes in for flag gaming. They're just going to collect all the ult charge they need as well to set up for the next fight. Even get a Diva Bomb out as well. And it feels like, well, Flat Gaming, they're just on top of the world at the moment. They know exactly what they're doing. They know what strategy they need to run. Their ultimates have been rotated fairly consistently, which means that they always have a backup plan in case they need it. Moss 7 Club and now starting to switch up. I was just going to ask, when, how long do you keep running into this before you've changed up a composition that is struggling to really get any use and has very little impact? But now you have two big ultimates available to you now, Earth Shatter and Graviton, respectfully. Moss 7 Club just need to build them up now. Yeah, it feels like this Zarya from Jason is just getting away with murder because there's sort of this, this rule of thumb. I actually hold that thought at the moment as Vanessa gets a nice early kill onto DMO uh, with no mercy there to res it. He's out of the fight. Graviton Search comes out of Jason, gets one or two. Bigger bomb goes in over the top as well. Diva bomb comes in but doesn't get anything. The barrier is there just to catch it. Everyone still mostly alive. Master does get dropped down, but of course there is the rest to pick him up. Farah gets the barrage out, does get some damage out, but does get taken out of the sky as well. Jason, though, continues to be this menace on Zarya. This is continuing to lay out that damage but not before mask can actually find the damage he even just gets the lucio with a single hit there lucio on 81 percent as well he could build up that ultimate cause real problems but they're not getting fast enough at the moment yishin does get that crucial grapple surge out can this be enough for them to flip the point here can this be enough oh the earth shatter from over this might be enough to stall it here it just might be and it does look like the aggressiveness of my seven stack show jimmy is now on the doom fist able to get picks but they have a huge loss they've lost their mercy on their lineup so now it's just a case of maybe looking after yourself support-wise, trying to find a target as Hammond Wrecking Ball is swinging across the point. Very little to stop it. If this needs to try and get the trajectory right to shut that down. Vegeta is held off the point. Reinhardt charges in. But again, it's easy pickings for Jimmy to clear that up, especially when a big movement resource is moving. Clock's ticking up. The percentage of the point is ticking up. Must have a club looking very much complete control. 
finally, Mika gets that sound barrier out. He's been killed twice before he can actually land that. Jim, who actually has the ultimate, he's going to have to use it there. Just gets away from the Begita, keeps himself safe. He's going to try and get onto Coldest, but doesn't manage to find it. Does have to jump away as well. There goes another Gravitol Surge from Yixin. Does have the Moira caught up as well. Coalescence, not going to save you there, love, as she does get taken down once again. But Life continues to stagger this one out. They've done such a good job of holding on at this sort of last gasp. It's actually, they haven't even completed the second third yet. The Black Gaming struggling just to confirm this one. Might be able to roll it over for that second third, but they're not killing fast enough. This is a problem I alluded to before. You've got to win decisively on 2CP. And because they did, you know, you have a Pharah sort of flying around in the air, the general rule of thumb is that if you have more people, attackers on the point than defenders, then the stall time uh, of respawns goes up for the defenders. But the issue there was that Flag Gaming were mostly on the point, so they had more people on it, therefore they didn't get their sort of despawn penalties, I suppose. So it was fairly easy for Flag Gaming to come back into that fight. Moss 7 Club didn't really have the target focus to completely clear that up. It's something that we see quite a lot of so far. Pulse Bomb just come in onto Jimu, taking him down. It looks like Goat's Comp predominantly is coming out of Moss 7 Club. And now we're starting to see a little bit of Sombra from DMO. Yeah, DMO swapping up that pick bring, uh, brings out the Sombra as well. Perhaps this wants the EMP to shut down some of this tankiness, some of this durability coming out of Moss 7 Club. It's going to be very difficult when you run into those EMPs every single time. Of course, Sombra is so safe now, so it's sort of easy to set up. It's going to be no problem at all for DMO to try and set that one up. And also, Jason, bring out the Tracer. I mean, we've called this guy out as being sort of a carry player. Are we going to see some very aggressive dive play perhaps on this end after? I think Flag Gaming are really good at knowing when to be aggressive, even when they lose a play themselves. And the dive comes in, the hat comes in, and we do see DMO translocate out, so we don't really get to see exactly what happened. But it starts off with a pick onto Mask, who I think was hacked out of the air. And now Moss Club yeah. 7 are using their ultimates before they're even on the point. So big loss there without the Earth Shatter. They're still going to try and push on through there because they have to. It's about to go into overtime. Yeah, they've got to get something done here, but crucially they forced out the Transcendence there, like with that very, very early push. Yishin manages to survive the Tracer Pulse, well, of course, does have that personal shield available. He's so low, but he's actually surviving. He's still alive somehow. Mercy's just pouring healing into him, and he's just keeping himself alive. Yishin, the crucial live here, and if he can just hold on that little bit longer, well, now he's got a ton of ult charge as well from this Diva Ultimate. This could be the perfect storm. This could be just what they needed to clean up here, as now they're going to start tearing people apart here on the point. Vanessa continues to hold on. Masking swap into that Soldier 76, just get back to that a little bit faster. They've almost completed. They're so close to getting things done. they just got to get one or two more kills. Mask with the rocket will finish up the kill there, and they don't get back on the point, and it looks like Moss 7 Club, believe it or not, will cap this one out. And not a moment too soon. They managed to do it in overtime, which means that they don't really have any more allocated sort of space that they could use, which does mean that uh, Flag Gaming do need to you know sort of complete the point with more than one minute on the clock it's a fairly straightforward to do but they need to have that momentum and snowball potential which i think uh moss seven club really lacked they couldn't really go from first taking it to second they had to change up their comp they got stalled out quite a lot but for them it's just a case of maybe try and hold first or second at any point and they should win out this fight but again this could go either way it's kind of what strategy um flag gaming want to be running and Feels like they immediately they're locking in guts comp. They, yeah, they they seem to find it working. I mean, they did try something a little bit different there. They changed to this very sort of aggro divey comp with the tracer sombra. And they managed to get an early transcendence out, but it still just wasn't enough. I think a crucial ash shadow sort of helped swing that one, and a couple of quick picks left them vulnerable on the point. So maybe they're feeling a little bit burned. Maybe they're feeling a little bit like, oh well, we moved off goats and we lost straight away. So surely the answer then is to just stay on goats forever. But they got to. Oh, just pay heed to the fact that, well, MSC, they can bring out just about anything here. And it looks like we're actually being joined for the first time by the Orisa Hog combo. The good old ball and chain. They're sort of pulling a target into the air with a halt and then hooking them down. Interested to see that they're not running the one support like you'd see in the Overwatch League. There's no Widowmaker in play here. Instead, you have the Zenyatta to chunk out a lot of damage. So... I think it's going to be a case of they know that Flag Gaming will want to run, go to comp here. Maybe they're feeling that the Bastion strategy is a little bit too, like, uh, just too ballsy, I suppose. It's really the only word that I can think to describe a strategy of that caliber. So now they're just going to play a little bit more safe, fight from distance, try and hold ground as they can, hold people back, make sure that they can't really take any ground. Flag Gaming just need to sort of rotate, play around it, try and get a pick early if they can. Yeah, Flag Gaming looking for a nice, decisive early engagement. They, of course, want to build up that Coalescence nice and fast as well. So they're just going to run straight in by the looks of things. Nope, they're going to go 
for a, a bit of a circuitous wrap around and they will just slowly get themselves into place. But Moss 7 Club doing a good job just rotating away. They're going to try and maximize the distance between themselves and the GOATS comp as far as they can. So far, Flag Game, they've gone on a tour for the factory. They've just sort of arranged that quite nicely with Katia Voskaya. And now they're going to start rolling forward. The brawl on the point does begin. Reinhardt collides with the team. Actually, they are resetting really a lot of trouble at the moment. Has to use that Fortify early. Will get torn to pieces, taken down and removed from the game. And oh dear, that looks like a problem on their end, not on ours. So I guess, well, but going back to our beautiful faces, we'll find out what happened with they, that they, in they a like moment or two. But yeah, that something something went wrong. That's that's not on our end. That's on their end, I guess. So we'll see what happens with that one. I don't know if they can just roll it back and make it work. But it was looking good. It's just kind of a shame because it was looking good for Flag Gaming there. Very different strat. Like I think what was interesting is they saw the Orisa put down the shield on the defense, and then they switched around to attack from the flank because obviously Orisa can't keep just putting down shields. There is a bit of a cooldown on it. So as soon as they spotted that, they kind of shifted their momentum to try and attack Orisa from the side. The team couldn't use her shield. It was just sort of placed out of the way like a like discarded traffic cone. So they just sort of mowed down the Orisa. She died and something happened to the server. So this is just a case of sort of wait and see. It does look like they'll be resetting that fairly early on. Not really sure what's happened. Not really sure the ruling on this. I don't think this has happened a lot of time in contenders, especially in the playoffs. So uh, I think we'll get back to you on that one. I'm not really sure if we want to be doing any more over top. We've talked a lot about Voskai beforehand. So I think we'll throw it to a quick break or whilst people decide what's going on. So uh, we won't be long. We'll let you know what happens here if there's any changes. Uh, but until then, just sit tight. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Contenders China. I am Josh Wallamax Money Pemberton, joined by the illustrious Ryan Central. And we've got the next map for you guys. It's going to be Watchpoint Gibraltar. So this is interesting because a lot of the teams have been picking up Route 66 um, and have been picking up Rialto. This to me feels like... Let's try Hammond. Let's just give Hammond a go. Of course... It was Moss 7 Club's decision to choose this map. So I feel that this might be a case of try and, uh, try and play comps here, please, guys. Uh, just try to make sure that they can get um, flag gaming onto a different strategy that isn't just GOATS comp, right? So I feel that this is a very nice uh, curveball to throw in. And it does bring out different strategies. I think it's going to bring back Widowmaker. It's going to bring back Mercy a little bit for the damage boost and the res. Already, like flag gaming are prepping for their defense. Picking up the Hammond, but maybe just toying with him a little bit. Actually, no, they're just going to go for Mercy. No Symmetra, though, but a bunch of cowards. Yeah, play Symmetra, you cowards. Right. No, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. But they do have the Sombra coming out. DMO going to bring that one forward. So they're going to be looking for some spicy hacks, of course. Watchpoint Gibraltar, very much about verticality and sort of controlling vertical movement. No surprise as well. We see Jason coming out on that Widowmaker. This is a very Widowmaker favored map. And if you can get that set up and get the shots firing, it's going to be huge. It's going to be massive. Yeah, I feel I, this is a map and a game mode type that I think really uh, lends itself to Moss, Club, uh, Moss 7 Club. But they're running a very slow strategy, which is kind of ironic Ooh. that they probably picked this cut like it's this happening. map to get away from Goat's Comp. But yeah, they're it's just yep, choo choo. It Dude, they're all aboard. The Bastion has joined us. They have gone for the pirate ship. What? It, this is in Australia, ladies and gents. This is this is Watchpoint Gibraltar. This this is a different map. This isn't Junker Town. Masto is still alive. Managing to sort of get the Brigitte covering his back there, so he's actually going to survive quite nicely as he's just constantly watching. But he's got to be so careful coming out here. They're all set up above him. The pull comes in. The damage is being done, but there's not finding any kills. But cruising this payload is running forward. They're finally getting a little bit of a stall on it though. Exactly, and it's it stopped in its tracks, which is very difficult to do with this kind of comp, but now the aggression starts to come in. Uh, Flag Gaming seem to have got a good opportunity, but the Bastion's still alive, manages to take down Jason from a distance. Does look like DMO is struggling to get into that lane. He's taking a bit of damage, so has to sort of back out. His payload is starting to truck on through, and Flag Gaming are really struggling to sort of break this through. Moss 7 Club doing what they do best, curveball strategies on curveball maps. Flag Gaming don't like it one bit. Yeah, the, the Bastion comes out and destroys, but crucially, DMO has managed to do it. He's managed to build up an EMP, so he will have that available. And this team cop is so clustered around the point, this EMP could be devastating. Jason as well, swapping to the Doom Fist of all things. And it's the it's the EMP that I'm looking forward to, honestly. You can tell that it's going in. They know that the Bastion has the ultimate. Jason on the Doom Fist only has one target in his mind. It's going to sort of tear on through. Just get stood up by Brigitte. Very big counter for him if he gets caught out. Now Demo's going to be back trying to hack targets. Diva Bomb does come on through. This should give Moss 7 Club a little bit of space, though. 
Yeah, they're trying to just hold on to this one. We have the nano-boosted Brigitte as well, just clearing people out. There's actually getting stuck in this low-ground spawn as well. She's going to be doing so much damage down there. Mars comes back in on that Bastion, brings out the tank form. Plant Crank Armor tank is happening, ladies and gents, as he's just trying to find these shots, but everyone's hiding. Everyone's sort of staying out the way. These are also stuck in the back line. The Anna actually really out of position right now. There's the whole the point, trap the pulling point. people around. The point, the payloads actually just rolled through. They just completely got zoned away from it, caught out by that Bastion. They've completed the hangar phase with, with just this insane Cold. Exactly, like Mask didn't get any picks on the Bastion, but what he did do was force Flag Gaming into that little room with the mega health pack. And now this is a big stall coming out of Flag Gaming. They're looking complete disarray to this strategy. I think we all know how it feels. We've all had these games where Bastion's on the payload and you're not sure how to approach it, but they're still going to try and try and dive onto the Bastion. But it's so difficult when you have the Brigitte there, and now Anna's become much more meta. That's enough healing to keep him alive. Oh, Cold is so close to dropping down there. Looks like Over's managed to survive. Diva Bomb goes up and over. Oh my lord, it gets itself a double death. kill. And yeah, you expected like the Brigitte Barrier perhaps to save him there, but I think Brigitte was just out of position or dead at the point, so he just couldn't survive it. They've managed to stop the terror that is back in this Omnic threat looming here on Watchpoint Gibraltar. And now Mask is swapping off. Now they're changing things up, and it feels like this, we've got a pseudo Ghost Cult. We got like a very tanky thing no they're still deciding mass bringing out the hands on now and it feels like everyone's gonna have to change things up we've got to go for a longer range comp a longer range play style yeah, exactly as i said all the teams are pressing tabs to see what the other one's running not keeping too far from spawn i just love the fact that mask knew that the diva bomb was going over the Eureka barrier and because he wanted to change he was like well guess i'll die and just sort of accepted it so now jason's gonna go in aggressively really zone out Ooh. use the ultimate to keep himself alive and also be very aggressive taking the pick onto mass is going to just try and dive keep his distance from the gate and get the mess if he can but again zone out shut in the rim shut down so this match could go either way with how this fight is playing out yeah, it's going to be really tough at the moment. They've lost that Doomfist. You just couldn't quite find the hit onto the Mercy. Viva Bomb going up and over. Now they've got to do something about this one. Is there any follow-up to make this work? No, unfortunately not. So the Diva Bomb just bounces off the right heart barrier. It feels doesn't get the results it was quite looking for at the moment. Sounds like a Nano Boost has gone in at the moment, though. They want to get something done here. Our Shadow goes right into the barrier. Doesn't quite find the target either. Mask still trying to find something from this high ground, though. It has to just be careful with that ultimate. But Jason continues to devastate on the Zarya. He's been the constant thorn in the side. He's on high charge. He's just ripping people down with that massive particle cannon. It looks like Flag Gaming will continue the hold here. They need to buy so much more time. The three minutes 30 still left on the clock. They do have Nana Beast though, which not only is a good aggressive ultimate, but can keep a target like over alive if he's going to be aggressive. I need to talk about DMO's Brigitte. It's been stellar so far. The shut down the dives that's coming in to keep his fellow supports and team alive. It's been the difference here to sort of stall out this point a lot. Earthshot does get used though by over. Doesn't really amount to much. But Moscow 7 are still in this fight. Yep, Nanabu's going on to over. He's just going to start pressuring his way forward. He wants to get something off the back of that one, but it looks like he gets, just gets bounced off there by that Brigitte once again. Has a tough time surviving as well. Sound Barrier even deployed in this fight, and this looks good for Moss Club 7, as now they're going to be pressuring the way forward. They have the rally running as well. Everyone gets all that extra armor, and they're pushing them all the way back into spawn. This could be the push they needed. This could be the one that finishes it up. Flag Gaming stuck. They get the um, Graviton Surge out, though, and they've got nothing to counter this one, so the damage comes through, and Flag Gaming break their way back out once more. It continues you with their defense it was the perfect ultimate to have in that situation it's just tearing on through and there's already a quarter of having another one jason proving the difference there that graviton was just because you saw my seven club crushing free so aggressively yishin was just going to keep him there with the graviton oh sorry uh yeah like jason was going to keep him there with the graviton so it was fairly easy for that game to come out of spawn and sort of hold that up they do see uh the slept Reinhardt front of Diva Bomb tried to charge Vanessa out of the fight, which is exactly what happens. There's still a good amount of time on the clock for Must Seven Club to do this with time to spare. And they do have a Graviton 2 ready and waiting. They have a grab and they have a Dragon Strike. It's a classic combo that never seems to go out of fashion. And I think there's nothing really to counter it here on Flag Gaming. If the Graviton Surge goes in, this could be devastating. He's looking for it, goes in, gets a whole pile of people. Where is the Dragon Strike? Here it comes. The Dragon is sated, ladies and gentlemen, as they collect their kills, they collect their due, and they will continue rolling this one forward. If the enemy team isn't running a Transcendence, isn't running something to stop that combo, well, you just set it up and knock them down. They had the time to do it. And does anyone get out to suggest they just barely do so? Tracer tugs it, and there we we go. Moss 7 Club finish out the point with a stellar Bastion pirate ship push.
It really did catch Flag Gaming off guard. And up until the second point, it looked like they were very much in control. You got to say, though, it's well played from Flag Gaming to actually stall out that point, bring out some different strategies, really change up how the match was looking in terms of compositions. Yeah, it was it was definitely sort of a tough one. Sort of if they had, you know, the Widowmaker and Sombra, they were perhaps expecting a, a Farah comp or Widow comp, you know, something they can pressure around with that Sombra, but it's gonna be very difficult for her to get in and actually do meaningful things when you've got a Bastion just surrounded on all sides by barriers that Arisa and Brigitte providing all that protection. Now then though, one minute twenty-four left on the clock. It's definitely a time that can be beaten, but there are so many points on which points of Gibraltar that can be stalled out. The hangar phase, in particular, which was a bit of a disaster on that defense. Well, that could decide everything if momentum starts falling in one team's favor. When chaos begins, I think that's where you start to see Moss Seven Club really thrive. And it was a big mistake we saw Flag Gaming being stuck in that room towards the left, where Jinmu is now, which is zoned out by the Bastion's ultimate, that they couldn't even contest a point. This is a fairly interesting strategy, fairly aggressive, I'd say, coming out of Moss uh, 7 Club on this defense. You can tell because of the Zenyatta Ana combination. That's long range healing. It's very um, based around utility and what you can provide instead of just flat out a lot of healing like a Moira or Mercy can bring. So, especially with the Hammond, too, the Wrecking Ball, that is a composition that's very much looking to be very aggressive as soon as the spawn doors open. And Soldier 76 is joining us once more. Fell a little bit out of favor, but since those hit scan changes have come in, he's a bit more deadly at long range, perhaps a little less shut down by armor quite as much as he used to be as well. So he used to be king of this map for a while way back, and now, well, he seems to be making himself known once more. Meanwhile, though, on the offense, we do see the Sombra coming out once more. Demo looks like he's opting for that one. A quick cheeky hook coming out from Mika. Looks like he's going to swap right back to the Mercy. Yes, he does. Just a and now Demo to the range forward. Demo's just got to scout, try and gain the information. It's so valuable to a lot of these teams. But as you can see, Vanessa is just looking for a prime position. Maybe they're sort of expecting this kind of lineup. So they're playing a little bit further back. As you said, long range is the name of the game with this lineup. Mask on the high ground alongside an Ana and a Zen. Just means that Flag Gaming can't really fight that from distance. Saying that, Jason can easily get Pixis as no barriers to protect them. But Demo is very much on the flank. Sees the target in mind. Gudan goes down. Yeah, just beautifully done there. You just get the disable and the dive follows up. Mask with a nice counter kill though on that high ground. Soldier 76 is going to be a bit of a threat, but with this mono support comp, you've got so many aggressive pieces just running into you. Coldus actually starting to devastate here on this back line. Vanessa doing what he can to stall up on the point, but this might be a little bit short lived. He's got to bounce out, get that health back, and might just get right back into the fight. Has to be careful though as the payload does continue rolling forward. Jason set up on the high ground. There's the hack as well. That should be the end of Wrecking Ball as he can't really do anything anymore, just gets picked off once more. And now Jason's in prime position. This should just be a completion for Flag Gaming. It should be, and you can start to see Moss 7 Club changing up their lineup. Maybe they were expecting more of a GOATS comp sort of composition that they wanted to fight from distance, make sure that they could keep away as much of the big tanks as much as possible. But Flag Gaming bringing out more of a traditional dive. Triple DPS is very aggressive, very interesting. You can see how they're making advantage of the uh, bad spawns, I suppose, that Moss 7 Club have got. They've changed up their lineup. They've got rid of the Hammond. They're playing more of a typical dive. I think Jimmu's staying on the Junkrat until he can use the Riptide. That could be a deciding factor on where and when this payload stops moving. Yeah, Moss 7 Club gonna respect this dive. Jinmu swapping onto that Brigitte, but they gotta be so careful about this person. DMO has that EMP ready and waiting, and if they just slip up for one moment, they stand a little bit too close together, they could be in a lot of trouble here as the payload just starts rolling on through. Dive goes in on the back line. EMP has gone off and managed to hit a number of targets as well. There's the cleanup. Kill feed is nothing but white at the moment as they are just dropping light flies, and it feels like Flag Gaming are in complete control at the moment, storming through Watchpoint Gibraltar. Saying that though, we did see Moss 7 Club doing a fairly similar thing, getting stalled on the third point. So Flag Gaming still have it all to do. They do have a lot of ultimates though. They know this. Moss 7 Club, uh, unfortunate respawn. So they're just going to uh, top themselves and then respawn in a better position. That's why the team kill has got the easiest team kill of Flag Gaming's life. But they know how aggressive this lineup can be. So Moss 7 Club made sure that they weren't going to get caught out at all. So now DMO is just going to scout on a head to try and find a position. Most of the club are going to take their time with this. 
Yeah, Flat Gaming taking the time to get himself set up quite nicely. But that's a big kill coming out of Mars. Getting rid of Jason on that high ground is going to be absolutely vital. Let's the dive in the back line. Tracer and Sombra trying to find some targets with one another. The rail on Jason, though, brings him back into the fight. And with style as he just gets rid of Mars. That boy is smoking for sure. As now over, just going to rampage on through. Flat Gaming managing to keep this one alive that little bit longer. This attack steadily going further and further into their favor. As now the sun to roll forward. This could be it, ladies and gentlemen. They could be finishing this map out in style. This could be throwing all around analyst for a loop is the 3-1 could be going the opposite direction coldest in prime position now just get that little bit of an ambush they have a diva bomb as well to finish this one out hack tries to go on the reinhardt doesn't quite find it dmo there you can see on the high ground it's just looking for that advantage diva taking her time she's trying to angle the bomb trying to just get it set up wear out everyone's cooldowns and then perhaps throw it in at the last possible moment there's the emp here comes the follow-up and there's the bomb lands triple kill comes through and flag gaming complete the map in style rampaging through unstoppable I would say, I would dare say, as they complete it in great time. I think you've got a good example there of why Sombra is so good in this meta, having the information, having a synergy to set up big plays like the Diva Bomb that we saw at the end. It's a prime example of what a Sombra can bring on your team, but I think Flag Gaming knew the kind of like damage that you lose, but they were like, okay, it's fine, we'll just run solo uh, Mercy, basically, and just sort of hope that we can survive off of that get a bit more damage onto the team coldest has been pretty amazing at being able to change to a dps when necessary so lots of pods can't really do as well so now flag gaming just have to defend for just below 90 seconds my seven club gonna bring out the bastion again yeah, they're going straight for it. This is risky. I mean, the Bastion thing is a bit of a gambit. I dare say it's a little bit of a, a cheesier style comp, right? Where it's like the surprise of the Bastion is generally what gives you all that momentum. Flag Gaming, though, seem undeterred. They are running a Tracer, though, instead of a secondary support. So maybe the triple DPS, they think, is the answer. Maybe they're hoping DMO can find a hack. I think Jason's sticking on that Widowmaker as well is a little bit of a risk. But Moss 7 Club, this could pay off for them. They really did get quite far on that first Bastion push. If they can do it again here, who knows how quickly they can get through the map, even in overtime yeah and flag gaming are just going to be wise to it so straight out the spawn doors flag gaming are going to know they're going to see the bastion and change up their strategy they've played it once before they kind of know how it works these aren't just amateurs they are professionals they know kind of how to break apart a bastion composition i guess it was just more that they were caught out last time flag gaming just still have it all to do they just need to sort of find an opportunity in the avenue to jump on mask and so far it's not really working out yeah, unfortunately, they did jump on Mask, and Mask sort of turned them into red mist by the looks of things. That's sort of the danger of that Bastion. Jason, though, does manage to find a bunch of kills, and now they start rolling forward. Oh, no, your head just pokes oh. through. takes a pile of damage. The Holt almost managing to get everyone out of the way. Jason, in a lot of trouble, though, has to run, find that health pack, and with Mask still alive, just tearing people down on this Bastion. He is rampaging at the moment. No one can deal with him. All the healing, all the shields, all the barriers, everything is there in his support, and now he has that tank form as well. He's trying to land the shots onto DMO, bounce him off the back, wall there gets the damage through and just finally push them out they can't move out they can't get test the payload and it will continue rolling forward here the pirate ship is gonna continue sailing through here onto hangar phase yeah flag gaming need to be a little bit careful here just so they don't keep elongating these fights they need to have a nice hard reset get their whole team out ready and grouped up for this next push use ultimates as they get them jason is actually going to switch onto the doom fist to try and find a good opportunity to break this apart meteor strike might be a nice ultimate but he needs to build it up for this DMO does have the EMP, so this is what they're waiting for. Moss 7 Club need to be aware of this. Yeah, and they're actually spread out a little bit, but there goes the EMP. There goes all the follow-up as well. They're just landing on top of absolutely everybody. Tracer Bomb goes in as well, cleans up here in overtime. This is what they needed to happen, and now they just need to finish this one up. It looks like Flag Gaming will stop it here just at the start of Hangar Phase. Perhaps this might not be enough for Moss 7 Club. There's a lot of time left in that time bank for Flag Gaming. Especially how quickly Flag Gaming pushed through the first half of this map. It does look likely that we'll be seeing future uh, Flag Gaming sorry, taking this whole match and taking the whole series and going through to the semi-finals. But it's not done just yet. If there's any sort of strategies, any ace up their sleeve, the Moss 7 Club want to pull out. Now, now is the time to do it. So I'm very excited to see what they do in their last-ditch attempt to bring this to a 2-all scoreline. Maybe push this to a deciding control map but right now it's a very difficult position to be in if you're most clubs uh, most seven club and flag gaming must be feeling pretty good about themselves right now
yeah, Flag Gaming, they, they have options, right? 4 minutes 21 gives you a lot of time to sort of play around with. You can steadily build ultimates. You can do things like just play Zarya, get two Graviton Surges out, for example, and then just clear through. And if Moss 7 Club do stick to this team comp, then they're not going to have actually any protection against those Graviton Surges. So that could just be a nice way for them to claw through the map. Instead, they're going to be opting for the defensive Sombra. Going to actually have a battle of the Sombras here, so controlling health packs and making sure that you don't get hacked going to be vital in the coming up matchup, but they also got to be aware of the threat that Jason poses. This man has been the carry for Flag Gaming and continues to do so, I would dare say. I'd say so too, yeah. He's been uh, the difference, I feel, just the ability to find picks and push on through. Jason, on that Widowmaker, Jinmu is... Oh yeah, God, Jinmu can't oh! see some... I was wondering why he was just teabagging on his own, but he gets completely caught out. He was just stood there waiting. He must have known that there was going to be a Sombra. He just sat there like bait and just got hacked and taken apart. So that, that was terrible from Jinmu to sort of sit there and wait for that opportunity to get taken up the fight. But Jason is on the point. It does look like Moss 7 Club are going to be able to sort of hold this point in a very aggressive position. But man, what was that? It just, it, it's a real feels bad man as well when you get the dash off, but the hack still goes through and your wall climb doesn't kind of work. So Genji just kind of slides down it in a comical fashion. It was just, he was just sat there teabagging, just like, like da, 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 not expecting that you'd get hacked. Like in this meta, Mike is now the uh, victim of this, but Mask goes so low that he needs to jump out. But it does give an avenue for Flag Game to push aggressively, start to get a couple picks. Yeah, I love this swap from Jason. The enemy team is very agile, very quick on their feet. So swapping to that Farah, they have nothing to disable this. They have no hit scan and the air to stop the Farah from just rampaging around. All they can hope for is Mask perhaps going to land a hack, but that's going to be very difficult. And Jason's just going to try, uh, try and style all of these guys. They spot out the Sombra as well. She uses the Transit Cape, but is now vulnerable. Will get taken down. The healing is kind of there for her, but the Winston just puts the bubble around and will end that one. Mask has that EMP most crucially as well. Still three minutes left on the clock. They've got to stall this one out as much as possible. This is where they're going to be committing to this fight. They need to get some kind of victory on the board here. Jinmu gets hacked, is in a lot of trouble. Winston just gets on top of him. That said, Gudan does manage to find Coldus here on that Brigitte, but Jason's still going to be this threat in the skies. Once that Diva is gone, especially, it's going to be so hard to deal with. Looks like the hack has gone through those. Will pull him out of the air, but they need to convert this into a couple of kills. It's happening, though. Moss 7 Club finds what they need and will start clearing this point in a perfect position too they now have sort of defenders favor it's going to hack the diva keep her stalled out for a little bit longer but very much good strong play from the dps of moss 7 club the combination there of the emp into the dragon blade was the difference it did start with a pick as you mentioned from gudan on the brigitte to sort of stall this out rally does come on through to give people a little bit more armor so we're going to see Moss 7 club just probably take together a little bit this is the final opportunity to bring this back Jason has actually switched over to the Zarya. They're going to come because they love this. Yeah, they just want to have a big old fight on the point. But running Goat's Comp into a team that already has ultimates is always a little bit dicey. That said, they've managed to keep themselves together. We'll try and find what they can. But Coldus actually gets sniped out there. Getting a hack onto that Moira is going to be vital when you can actually find it. She relies so much on that fade to keep herself alive. A huge bomb coming out of Vanessa as well. Should put the kibosh on the end of this team fight. So Moss 7 Club continue the hold and move into the next fight as well, probably with an EMP. Mask has really come alive on this EMP. He's really uh, EMP on this Sombra. He's really like showing uh, how much impact he can have on this hero. And it's surprised me that they haven't really wanted to run this a bit more often. So this is now starting to look like a strategy and a way to actually shut down Goat's Comp. They just need to be careful of some of the big ultimates that will be coming online fairly soon. Yeah, they've got to keep Jason under control more than anything. If he manages to get a pile of damage, well, he's going to start taking over the game. But the EMP comes through regardless. Jim, uh, Jimmu draws the Dragon Blade, but oh, goes down to DMO. Brigitte finds him there with that Rocket Flare. Will take him out of the sky. Fight is anyone's game at the moment. As Coldus has brought out the Coalescence, it's going to keep people alive on the point. Sound Barrier even keeping Moss 7 Club in this fight. We do see the Brigitte's hack, but she's going to bide her time, wail away there, provide healing to all of her allies, and now going to start pushing back out once the hack does wear off. Yixin in a little bit of trouble here, just does get cornered out, but it is pressure on these supports, but there's just so much healing, the Winston feels so negated, does a Primal Rage cancel out that little bit longer, will be very difficult to clear, and now the reinforcements actually coming in from Moss 7 Club, gonna be bringing it back, Junkrat does join us as well, all that extra damage will be so useful here, and it looks like Moss 7 Club will push this one out. Again, the hero swaps have been amazing, it's such a smart decision from Jinmu, almost has an ultimate, so it really shows how much damage he's putting in Ooh. onto these big tanks, some amazing hacks to really stall up this fight. Some really strong play from Yishin uh, to not even use the Primal Rage to stall up this point. It's now going into overtime. This could be the final fight, or this could be this 
one opportunity for Moss Summer Club to do that. He actually manages to demake the Diva, I believe. Yeah, Lai gets out of it. And that's EMP. This could be it for Moss Summer Club. They can do this. Yeah, the EMP's going to disable them. They've got some nice early kills as well. The advantage is swinging in their favor. There goes the Graviton Surge, though. We can't see what it's got because Yishin's just pushing Jason back. Make sure Jason can't get anything. And as a result, the, the Graviton Surge just falls a little bit flat. Now Jinmu's on the bounce back. He's on 80% ultimate charge. If he gets 100%, he can definitely clear this point nice and quickly. Arshada comes out, puts Jinmu on his back, but the follow-up just isn't quite there. Oh, no, it is coming in, though. Moss 7 Club losing two players at the moment. Over just rampaging around at this point, swinging his hammer, trying to clear it off as best as he can. He's still enduring though he's still alive finally goes down there it is oh. there's the riptire and moss seven club have evened up the score we are going to game number five what a turnaround it looked like moss seven club weren't going to be able to bring that back but they managed to switch to a strategy that really seemed to suit them you sort of didn't expect uh, a strategy that like they weren't running it at this point right they haven't run it really at all so seeing them run it this early you kind of think maybe it's just not sort of what they want to do but they really showed how good and uh, important it can be for stolen first out points. Now we go to control though, and Flag Gaming did win out fairly easily on Li Zhang Tower earlier on, so it might not be all that good for Moss 7 Club going into it, but it's an opportunity more so than they would have got if they had lost. Yeah, I mean, Moss 7 Club, I think finally it feels like they're showing their true colors. They're playing things that are a little bit different, playing things a little bit that, you know, might be a little bit spicy. I dare say, and it seems to be working very well for them. All right, guys, we're going to go to a brief break while we wait for game number five. When we have map number five, we'll be right back with you, though, to round out this series. It's gone the distance. Can Moss 7 Club bring it back and actually just rampage their way through, or will Flag Gaming cause the upset and put Moss 7 Club out of the, the playoffs? We'll find out very soon. See you then. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we have our final map for you. This is all to play for, right? This is all the marbles. This is knockout stage. This is playoffs. So either one of these teams, if they lose this map, they are out. And the map will be Ilios. Uh, very diverse map with some of the strategies you can run. A little bit of where to make a play, obviously, for Ruins, uh, for the well. Everything to play for. I guess you're going to see a lot of Lucio boops, potentially. Always hungers. But uh, this is so close now i don't really know which direction it's going to go moss seven club are going to be running goat straight off the bat flag gaming are going to be doing the same you'd say straight off that sort of information flag gaming would have the advantage here interesting that there's going to be very little like widow maker play on here but then again if you're running into a bunch of tanks that can't really get one shot it's going to be very difficult to do that but straight off of it this score is two all the best of three on Ilias. this is decider on who will go to the semi-finals in the first quarter final of chinese contenders I have a challenge for you, chat. What is the collective noun for the GOAT? Because firstly, I don't know. I actually really want to know. As we do see both teams just positioning, jockeying for each other, looking for some kind of angle. The Reinhardt charge not quite finding targets as Vanessa actually gets in there nice and early. He's just going to start swinging that hammer around in a very small room. And that's a large man with a big hammer in a tiny little room destroying the enemy team. Excellent start right now for Moss 7 Club. You can see they have all that ultimate charge built up. And Vanessa has a nurse. She had a crucially for next fight. For the next fight over is 50 percent on his i liked what must have did there they were aggressive on that sort of main plank just on the right of the point and they sort of waited a little second for flag gaming to actually come on through then they played really aggressive with a charge with the shield bash actually managed to get a pick on the flag gaming and from there they could get picks vanessa gets charged off the bat both uh right hearts go down but it's dima who gets the kill according to kill apparently i'm not sure that's right but we are going to see flag gaming sort of push back a little bit of the aggression and must seven starts to shut him through yeah, I mean, it's a good trade. Like, you know the enemy Reinhardt built up a lot of ultimate charge there, so you're going to get advantage. You also have spawn advantage, considering the range and flag gaming are going to leverage that as much as possible. Just going to grind their way forward, use that coalescence as best they can to get something done. Jimmy's activated the rally as well, giving this team a little bit more durability. There's the uh, Graviton Surge is coming oh, on both sides. Everyone's caught up. Urshad is coming through as well. They're looking to get a couple more kills, but only one actually comes through, and over is the only guy dropping. Such a crucial piece of the puzzle for flag gaming has died nice and early, and Mos Seven Club just continue to devastate. By the way, the collective noun for goats is a tribe, apparently. So there you go. It's tribe. Big. It makes sense with the sort of play style of how plus important these guys are. Evshot comes through. Oh. Actually tries to get it. Oh, it looks so close that Vanessa was going to be able to stop the charge. But actually, we do see Jimmy staying alive. Almost has another rally. Graviton does come through on the side of MSC. Looks like they're going to be able to hold up the point. 70% on it, though. 
Yeah, Diva Bomb gets lobbed in up and over, and so they're literally fighting outside the spawn. Vlad Gaming gonna be coming right back as quickly as they can, but they're just literally at the door, and they're just still killing them. They gotta just stay inside there. You're immortal while you're in that spawn room. Moss 7 Club know it. They're gonna back away, get ready for the next fight. Lai has to sort of swap off the Diva Swap back just to get the ultimate charge. And actually, Anna coming out now. Vlad Gaming, a little bit desperate, it feels. A little bit, but they do have a Graviton coming through ready on this next push. They're going to just change up their composition to be much more aggressive to build onto it fairly quickly. But Moss 7 Club are going to fight off the point. Are we going to see Flag Gaming being able to touch it at all? It's looking a bit dicey. They have managed to sort of kill up the kill feed. Or fill up the kill feed, rather. And now the stuff's clear up. It looks like they're going to take it. But Moss 7 Club do have that opportunity to just, you know, take it once. And then they've got the first point. Yep, Jason dropping the Graviton Surge there, catches everyone up. Meanwhile, Lai snuck around onto the point, so they didn't neglect that little fact, and so they managed to keep themselves in this game, but 99% to zero. It's going to be a big ask coming forward. Mask will be trying to build up that Graviton Surge as quickly as he can. Reinhardt goes for a bit of a charge there. It's a little bit of a whiff. Now Anna in trouble. DMO drops down. This could be what Moss 7 Club need to get a really good start on this map. Goal Essence comes through as well. Urshetta goes oh. in. Doesn't get anything, but they actually move over off the map. It's all over for that lad. Mika actually gets Mask off as well, but Jimu continues to devastate and just finds targets with this rocket flare. It's going to be up to Lai to try and stall this one out, but I don't think he's going to be able to do so. And it looks like Lost Seven Club will just bring this one back. I don't think Flag Gaming can get back here in time. And it looks like Brigitte might just be able to make it. They might just be able to get the touch going. And the overtime does begin, so they will get a second go at this, but over just gets food back, gets blocked down. Oh, oh no, he touches it. They just barely managed to get onto it. It's almost done. Overtime with burns down, and there we go. Moss 7 Club, one map up here in this deciding Ilios game. Throughout the whole of this series, Flag Gaming looked like the better team when it came to running that Reinhardt, Diva, Zarya triple support composition. But Moss 7 Club just seemed to pull it out of nowhere. That they looked the stronger side. They were spawn camping uh, Flag Gaming pretty much for a good portion of that. And now we go over to the lighthouse where you can essentially play the same sort of strategy and get away with it. This is a time where now Flag Gaming needs to pull out the ace from their sleeve, bring out a different strategy that may potentially stop Moss, Club 7, uh, Moss 7 Club pushing on through with this. And it was a literal spawn camp. They were at the door. Like, it was, it's nuts. You don't generally see that because you can just stand in the spawn door and farm the enemy team. That being said, it looks like once again, we will be going for Goats S comps at the moment. Coldest bringing out the Anna at the moment instead of that uh, Moira by the looks of things. So a little bit too relying on the anti-heal. We're gonna be looking for a grenade, gonna be looking for that little bit of extra healing, but of course don't have that early coalescence and is a little bit vulnerable to stuff like that. Yishin manages to find Coldest a good knockback as well from Feng Nian manages to get even more knocked off and that's gonna be a real nice start for Moss 7 Club. They are doing such a good job here and just ensuring that they will be going through into the semifinals. It's a great start for them. I think you sort of hit the nail on the head. Coldest run in the Anna makes her very susceptible to be taken out by Yishin on the Diva, especially. But also when you're running the composition that Moss 7 Club's running, i.e. when you're looking at the uh, support specifically, the Lucio and Moira are very difficult to dive on. And Anna, that's her biggest weakness. She has no close range abilities other than asleep, which is kind of difficult to hit. There's oh, an Earthshatter oh. waiting. That's a big charge, but the shield comes through. There's a lot of stuns. And the Earthshatter does actually come through from Flag Gaming. They're going to be able to play this up. Yeah, Over manages to cancel out the enemy Earthshatter and get his own through there. And now, well, he's given his team a nice little advantage at the moment. Now they're going to try and leverage this as much as they can. Diva Bomb gets dropped on the point, does get blocked up there, doesn't convert into any kills. And it feels like Flag Gaming are bringing this one back for themselves and not too soon as well. 40% still left on the clock and Flag Gaming now have a lot of ultimate charge in their back pocket. Exactly. I just got to highlight DMO on this Brigitte though. The stuns that have come through have been pivotal in designing factors and I think that's the best one that we've seen so far. Been able to actually stun out an Earthshatter and enable over to get his Earthshatter through is such a big thing when you're both playing the same composition where everybody's close together. All Earthshatters are going to be high impact if they go on through and it does look like we're going to see one right this second. Yeah, actually, they managed to drop a bunch down there. Now, Moss 7 Club, again, on that back foot, have to retreat. They have the Graviton Surge, but they don't want to use it while there are a couple of players down. This Graviton Surge is going to be vital, though, in the coming fights. If they can get it through, then they might actually be able to convert this into some kills. But there's not much killing power on Moss 7 Club's team. Not exactly. Like, that's go to come. It's more of a case of playing together and pushing them through. You have the aggression of a Lucio with a sound barrier. Graviton actually comes in fairly early, but there's no follow-up. There's no sort of like dragon strike or anything to clear up a lineup. You've just got to be there and hold left click if you're a Reinhardt or a uh, Brigitte. 
So it is scrappy. DMO does go down early in this fight, and it does look like this point is still going to be ticking up in Flag Gaming's favour. And it does look like they're going to be able to clear this up. It's Vanessa that's just left on the and gets dissipated by the whole of the squad. Yeah, and once again, Jason continues to be a constant threat. You can see him there just hiding away. Has a Graviton Surge of his own, so he's just going to be holding on to that one. And maybe they can convert it into a couple of quick kills here. 80% now on the clock to try and tie up here on Ilios and push us to the final decider of a map. And it's looking pretty good for Flag Gaming at the moment. There's the charge going in. Jason buys his time, but no, it gets eaten by the Diva. Absolutely huge. Yi Shin manages to catch it. He's kept his team in the game, but it's still not enough at the moment. Over has been devastating with Reinhardt and continues to do so. He's managed to get on top of the targets and will continue to just rampage on Jason as well. That threat I mentioned earlier, just still alive, not being contained, not being controlled. Jason is just tearing people apart, manages to take people out on the point. And there we go. We tie the series up one to one. We are going to the very end, to the very wire. And well, let's see what happens now on the well. We've gone the whole distance. Both of these teams have looked so strong in very different areas. It does look like they match pound for pound. So it really is a case of who can really sort of pop off in this situation. Which players can be the huge impact to enable them to go through to the semi-finals. It has gone down right to the wire. And both of these teams are going to be changing up their lineup somewhat. Diana's going to come out from Gudan. Does look a bit more straightforward from our seven club. Flag Gaming bringing out the Farah and the Sombra again. This could be disaster for Moss 7 Club if they're not careful. Yeah, this is really interesting. Like, Moss 7 Club are usually the ones we look to to play the unorthodox strategy, but Flag Gaming instead gonna be bringing out the Sombra, the Farah, not too uncommon here, but mono support for Flag Gaming. Mika has a lot of pressure on his shoulders at the moment. He's gonna try and support the Farah, but he also has to keep his team alive as best as possible. Far, of course, gonna put a ticking clock on top of Moss 7 Club. They've gotta try and deal with that somehow, or the barrage will inevitably cause a lot of problems. You can see they're just hiding away this little gazebo as they're waiting for the setup, waiting for that first opportunity to come through. Well, there's no point getting onto the point until it unlocks, so they don't want to be out in the open when they have lineups like Farah and Sombra. They need to keep together, need to keep shelter because they're taking so much damage. Jason is like good part way of having his ultimate is just chucking out damage and there's very little the Muslim Club can do about it. So they just need to sort of take the time and be careful, otherwise they're going to get picked off one by one. And he has the barrage available to him, puts it down straight away, gets the Lucio at the very least, gets a good amount of damage on the Reinhardt, even gets a shield break as well. EMP for the follow-up, Pulse Bomb comes in as well. Very quick ultimate build-up coming from Flag Gaming, of course. That big tanky Goats comp is going to give you a lot to feed off of. And Flag Gaming absolutely using that to their advantage. They take the uh, point crucially first. And now this is going to give them a nice advantage. Farah, so good on the defense. Most of the club changed up their lineup a little bit. We're going to see uh, Sombra and Genji coming out. Simply, most of the club were trying to run Goat's comp, but when you can't be aggressive and dive onto an objective or dive onto the enemy's backline, then you are just sat there waiting to die if there's a fire shooting from you from a distance. That's why DMO got that Sombra uh, EMP so quickly and has been flexing onto so many different heroes and being honestly the difference, I feel, been one of the biggest flex players that we've seen in this match so far. Now Moss Club 7 have to try and sort of do the same, basically running mirror comps with a Brigitte instead. Black Gaming running the triple DPS, very aggressive, and it even starts off with a pick from a Mercy onto Jinmi's Farah. Yeah, Mika just gets the first kill there. Mars actually getting a follow-up as well. Apparently the kill feed says that's a boop. I somehow don't believe that, even though Sombra is somewhat known for giving people a friendly boop once in, once in a while. But it looks like Moss 7 Club actually going to be springing this one back. They're trying to get the hack onto the Farah. There we go, crashes down to Earth. She has a barrage available as well. They're just going to clean this one up. No problem with Flag Gaming. Uh, sorry, Moss 7 Club managed to bring this one back and not using too many resources as well in the process. They actually got a good amount in their treasure trove. Yeah, they just pick people apart one by one. Having the utility of the Sombra enables you to take heroes out of the sky, literally, in Farah's case. So it does, you know, give a big problem. But yeah, there's, uh, there's more problems on the Observer side. And what a time, honestly. Oh, actually, we're, sort like we're actually back in the game. Back, so... yeah. Yep, hopefully we can get right back into that one. A very quick kill onto Yi, uh, from Yixian onto Jason. So Jason being down and out. Of course, running the Farah on offense is so much harder. You want to be playing that hero more on the defense. It's so much easier to sort of set up on her picker out the sky. As now, well, Moss 7 Club, they're going back for the spawn camp at the moment. They just want to keep Flag Gaming as contained as possible. They have an EMP and they might try and catch them on the rollout. You can see Mask looking 
for some kind of opportunity. He's biding his time at the moment. It's the far as you exchange a couple of rockets in the areas. Transicator has actually been taken out, so he's going to have to wait a little bit for that one to come back. EMP actually comes out from Flag Gaming, though. Can they turn this into a couple of kills? Looks like they've managed to disable Vanessa, but Jinmu comes in over the top. Doesn't actually get too much with that barrage. Just gets cut out with the D.Va just stalling that one for uh, just stopping that one up as best as possible. And now it's anybody's fight at the moment. It's, it's just chaos to sends on the point. Yishin trying to find what targets he can, just trying to bounce around, trying to disable and sort of disrupt where he can. All oh, the barrier actually manages to catch the pulse ball as well as someone passes through it. Almost gets the boop as well into the well. But at the moment, the point is just ticking up steadily for Moss 7 Club as it falls further and further into their favor on the match. But Flag Gaming looks like they might be able to take this point. It does look likely. It's all about stall from Moss 7 Club's perspective. They're 91% on the point. It does look like they will hand it over. But you can see that Moss 7 Club were dedicating a lot of ultimates to stall it out for as long as possible. It does enable them to have just one more fight. So essentially, they want to be building up this EMP from Mask. They want to be able to get some synergy, make sure that they can confirm picks with that ultimate. And from there, they should be able to win this out. But Flag Gaming have done this before, taking the point at a fairly low percentage and actually maintaining it and taking the round. Big kill comes out of Mask. Jason is down. And so this gives them a huge opportunity. If Mask 7 Club can turn this into even more kills, and they could be the ones going to the semifinals. Mika manages to get the res boost on Jason, though. EMP comes through. Is the barrage there to follow? Is the question. They just don't have the DPS to turn that into too much more. That said, they actually managed to find Jinmu. There we go. DPS now starts kicking on through. And Moss 7 Club looks like they're just going to be wrapping this one up. They know they have one opportunity, one more fight, or they are out, ladies and gentlemen. And they've got to do something very soon. Flag Gaming used a big ultimate though, the EMP and the Valkyrie actually. There was pretty terrific play. Yishin saw the low health Micah, the Mercy on Flag Gaming, decided to dive in. Micah ulted to get out the way and DMO actually EMP'd him as he was coming in and just essentially made him free meat for the team to pick out. But two big ultimates make sure that uh, Moss 7 Club couldn't, you know, impact on a pick. The Barrage is going to come out, actually gets a kill onto Mask that's so close to having an EMP. That's going to be the win condition, I feel, for this round. So if you can't get back and use that ultimate, that's going to be a big loss. And it does mean that Flag Gaming may win this. Yeah, they're in such a good position at the moment. That's it, Moss 7 Club, no slouches. Yi Shin just lights up the kill feed, has himself too, but he's in so much trouble at the moment. Drops down to Jason in the sky, just descends on him with a rocket from above. Moira now trying to still up on the point, uses the fade. Now she's vulnerable. You can see the tracer hunting her down. Coldest picks that one up. Jason picks up another one, and Flag Gaming have done it. They have advanced to the semifinals. The underdogs in this matchup proving our analysts wrong as well. They have managed to make their way to the semifinals, knocking out Moss 7 Club in dramatic fashion. Some amazing play from Jason and DMO. That barrage right at the death of it to actually get the kill onto Moss 7 Club Sombra to make sure that that EMP just couldn't be used. Mask just, just got his ultimate as it went into overtime and sort of ticked down. So they knew exactly what was coming and they did their best to shut that down and make sure that the EMP couldn't be used. So really big play from Flag Gaming right at the depth of it. It's been a long series. Both of these teams have peaked and troughed in very different areas. But it will be flag game and it will be going through to the semi-final. Most seven clubs ends here. Yeah, that's it's a shame to see them go. They are such an interesting team with so many different strategies. We've got to see some Bastion, which I'm sort of happy to see. But something we haven't seen in a little while is our beautiful and lovely desk with a kit tripod. So guys, please enlighten us. Tell us all about this game and tell us as many wonderful facts as you can, because that was one hell of a series. Please, 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 no, 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 no more of that. Anyways, wow, two and a half hour match, game five, and more than anything, I'm just glad to say that you guys were wrong, very, very wrong. You, you made it six seconds, KT. I'm proud of you. That's a new, <laughs> no, that's a new record, <laughs> right? That's a new yeah. record to call us out on the desk for being wrong. Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody knows that. Anyways, uh, we've got a lot to talk about here. Uh, <laughs> So wrong score, wrong team one, flag team, or flag gaming, sorry, one here. Where where did they really stand out and really be able to take this one in one that, you know, if you followed contenders, I would say, while it may not be an upset of like epic proportions, yeah, Moss 7 Club was definitely favored going into this one. Yeah, at the end of the day, Moss 7 Club won their group. Flag Gaming were the fourth seed. So they, Moss 7 Club were the clear favorites coming in. But Flag Gaming, DMO stepped up to a level we haven't seen him play all series. Coldest pulled out a lot of really high level tracer play, which again, we haven't seen all season. Jason did 
adjacent things on Fava. We've gone over that enough. And over as well was a huge t upgrade on main tank for flag gaming. So it was a perfect storm. Everything came together and it was a great win. It's a surprising win, but it was well earned for flag gaming. Well, and this is something we've been talking about all season, that flag gaming is a team that just kind of felt always a, a piece short and over might just be that piece, Kenobi. Yeah, I mean, over, it's kind of like, it's it's interesting to see how much that main tank role has affected the team in general and just how much better the DPS is able to play. Like, you know, Val has mentioned Cold as DMO and Jason. I think the reason that they were able to step up so highly and so well is just because of the space that over was creating for them because sometimes you know when it was melons they were playing a little bit more passive you know they couldn't play these kind of you know 1v60 roles they had to like you know they weren't as cohesive but now with like over over just decided he says okay i'm gonna take this team on my back i'm gonna be you know i'm just gonna be like a man i'm diving in as winston going in as reinhardt and you know he did he ended up winning the main tank battle against vanessa and that led to so many open doors for the likes of DMO, the likes of Jason, the likes of Coldest on Tracer, playing that, you know, triple DPS with the Sombra that we haven't seen so much in regular contender season, thanks to the patch. So the way that Flag Gaming kind of used this patch and used this comp uh, and used these uh, changes to their advantage was something I was really, you know, which was really cool to see. And then over, you know, as Flaws mentioned, just bring a lot of life to this team that we didn't see before in the regular season. Yeah. Uh, our predictions may have been wrong, but that's because we couldn't predict what we saw from flag gaming today today's flag gaming was a flag gaming we did not see even a glimpse of throughout the regular season and i'm all for it i'm glad we've seen this team take such a step up going into playoffs and it's really exciting to see what they can go on and do it's like they switched bodies right like moss 7 club was like the team that usually like plays these weird compositions and flag gaming is kind of this team that you know has been muddling around the middle of their group and then they like kind of switch and it's like they're you know flag gaming starting to play triple dps they're starting to play different compositions and while moss 7 club brought out the bastion a lot they had a lot of struggle playing their goats composition so yeah i think you know this is great for flag gaming great that we have you know our basically probably our first upset i would say in this season so you know, definitely looking pretty pretty good for these playoffs i think so in your opinion uh kenobi what does this mean for flag gaming going forward through this playoffs with this new flag gaming that we've seen here do you think that this is seriously a team that can contend as a fourth seed uh in in contenders china it's it's kind of cinderella e like this is like the cinderella run team we have this fourth seed beating the seed, you know Usually that doesn't happen too often, but I think they definitely have the confidence now. You know, after going through a grueling five-game set with Moss 7 Club, they definitely, or five-game match set rather with them, I think they definitely have the confidence, and they've shown today that they can play like around this meta pretty well. Their GOATS comp looks very good. Um, their triple DPS looks very good. Their somber play. Jason has been reeled in a little bit, not playing that type of Genji I mentioned before and like projectile where you're just going off doing your own thing. He's playing more with the team now. So I think they definitely do have, they do have, I think they have the chops to probably, you know, take whoever they go to against in the semifinals to, you know, another five game set. And they, def they definitely can, you know, once we get to land, they can definitely prove themselves. Yeah. The way that group A of contenders trying to regular season shaped out was that we had three teams lucky future zenith t1w esports club and lg that we all knew they were going to be the three teams that went on to playoffs it was just which of the lesser three teams in that group would be able to scratch through flag gaming was that winner of the lesser teams and they've come out today and said hey we're not a lesser team anymore we can go toe to do with anyone you have to pay attention to us and that's going to turn some heads in this scene cool all right, well, we are going to go ahead and get ready for the next match between Team CC and T1W Esports. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's uh, The sun's starting to rise here if you're in the U.S., so <laughs> good morning or go to bed. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, but before we do sign off for just a couple minutes, not even sign off, we're just going to go to a quick break. Uh, take a second and go over to twitch.tv slash broadcast GG. Broadcast GG is a community of broadcasters. It was only, honestly just a group of people who really enjoyed tier two and tier three Overwatch and Overwatch of every level created uh, an amazing community about it. And now they are here bringing you the English broadcast of Contenders China. So uh, go over, follow them on Twitch, twitch.tv slash broadcast GG. Follow them on Twitter as well. 
twitch.tv slash broad or sorry twitter.com slash broadcast dot gg kenobi guess what you spell gotta it out. spell out that spell dot out. d-o-t gg yep. you don't for twitch you do for twitter and last but not least if you're interested at all in getting involved with broadcasting head over to www.broadcast.gg and there you can find links to a ton of resources and our discord community where we can get you plugged in coming up next is team cc versus t1w esports club we'll be back in just a few minutes <laughs>